Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is Tuesday, and today, you can handle the truth. I don't even know why I have these headphones in. There will be no audio. There will be merely my voice to fill your ears with the truths of Theros Beyond Death. That's right, today, we're going to be doing a full set review. Every single card will get an esteemed 0-5 to five rating from yours truly. Last time, it took me about five hours and change, so we have six hours set aside today, so that way we can get through it all. Ah! Oh! Brief notification of what's coming up. Theros tomorrow, Thursday and Friday. It's the pre-release tomorrow, and then the event, or excuse me, the set actually drops on MTGA on Thursday. We'll be doing mostly walking late Thursday evening, doing some Nancy Drew. Next week, we have some of the usual stuff, except Monday's mostly walking, Tuesday, Thursday's magic, Wednesday, Dota, and Friday, Legends of Rune Terra. And don't forget, on Friday, if you want to join us for the DK30, go to dk30.day9.tv for more information. And let's all embark upon our projects together starting next Friday. Without any further ado. Mm. Uh, let's start with a card that I don't know how to pronounce. Alcid of Life's Bounty. Alcid. Hmm. I assume it's it's pronounced this way. Um, maybe it's all side. I don't know. You know what? This is already a really challenging set review for me. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I know there's the comic book character Dark Side that has a weird spelling that looks kind of like that. So maybe it's Al Alcide of Life's Bounty. It's a 1-1 one, one nymph. Nice. Life Link. Pay one and sack it. Target creature enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. I'm sort of interested in the enchantment focus of this entire set. The idea of kind of expanding some keywords around some of the, uh, just the, the, the enchantment permanent type. Because, you know, in the early days of Magic the Gathering, things were kind of hard partitioned. You know, blue is where card draw happens, like period. But drawing cards is kind of such a fundamental thing that you gotta let some other colors in on some card draw. Enchantments, it used to be these are the enchantment destruction colors, period. But we're starting to see more of that break down as enchantments have been getting explored. What are enchantments in red? What does artifact hate look like in red? There's been some sort of, uh, I'm gonna call it soft partitioning going on, and I'm a big fan of that. And I think this is a version of what we're seeing right there. Target creature or enchantment you control gains protection from the color of your choice until end of turn. From a constructed standpoint, this is 0 out of 5. This will see absolutely no play, even remotely. I can't even see it being used in a white weenie, although I haven't thought too much about the idea of what an enchantment creature is. You can see that text right there. Boom. Enchantment creature. Um, so, I mean, I mean, maybe we'll give it a 1. This is kind of a card that you'll accidentally wind up with in a limited uh setting, but I, I don't think this is a constructed playable thing. Well, shit. The fact that you can give a creature protection from the color of your choice is basically a save a creature thing. Ah, no, still zero, zero out of five for constructed. Ah, yes. We are already doing a great job with our ratings. In case any of you didn't know, my opinion on card reviews is that they are fun and recreational. Not that they are going to somehow be able to perfectly predict how all the completely unseen interactions of all the cards will function once released into the wild. So, um, if you make any purchasing decisions based upon this review, then shame on you. Uh, there you go. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Archon of Falling Stars. It is a six-mana big boy. When Archon of Falling Stars dies, you may return target enchantment card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Interesting, interesting. I really like this a lot in Limited. Like, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. Hmm. Just due to the fact that, you know, a 4-4 flyer is very nice. It is 6 mana, but, um, geez, it's a 6 mana flying cow. You're right, Yanish. Oh my god! That's a flying cow. I keep looking way past the art, man. I keep trying to identify these keywords and try to figure out how it's, the gameplay is going to be. This is a flying cow. That's going to give it at least a 4 out of 5 in our rating. When it returns an enchantment from the graveyard to the battlefield, it also makes me think of some real powerhouse enchantments, you know, like Doom Foretold, like uh, Ethereal Absolution. Those won't necessarily be constructed decks because, like, a 6-mana 4-4 flyer already feels kind of eh, and if I wanted to get some enchantments back, I might consider the White Cavalier as a cheaper, more powerful alternative, but, you know, as a constructed card, maybe one or two out of five. 
Archon of Sun's Grace. Oh, I like this card a lot. Two and two white. An Archon. A flying Archon that's actually a total pony. Flying Lifelink 3-4. Very nice stats. Very nice stats. Pegasus creatures you control have Lifelink. And Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, create a 2-2 two -two white Pegasus creature token with flying. Oh. Oh! Let's not forget that there are creatures such as the one that we were looking at just before. Uh, the Alcide of Life's Face Plant, I don't remember what the name of it was, that is an enchantment creature. So you can play enchantment creatures and proc the Archon of Sun's Grace constellation thing. So, woo! I would give this constructed... Mmm, this is a tricky one. I would actually probably give it a 3 out of 5. Maybe even 3.5 out of 5. I mean, honestly, a 3-4 flyer is pretty good. 3-4 flyer is pretty good. <sighs> my, my intuition... Here's here's where, my, where I'm reacting to. My intuition goes, oh my god. This is actually pretty sick. A 3-4 flyer with lifelink. Very good defensive creature that can continue to overtake the board. Um, but it is just a 3-4 for 4. So, good stats, especially for a flyer, but um, I kind of want to give it a 4 out of 5. But I'm sort of like backing off, because anytime there's something which is play a creature and then do something the next turn, those tend to be a little bit weaker. So that's why I, upon reflection, was like 3. And then I, I doubted my reflection, so I said 3.5. This is really an emotional journey, the evaluation of this. By the way, oh, what, wait, cheers to you for the 20 gifties. And eat some metal. Cheers to you, too. You know what? We're going to cheers to you a different fluid. Ah, yes, seltzer water. I'm, I'm going to tentatively hold off on a final evaluation for Archon of Sun's Grace until we see how many enchantment creatures there are. Banishing Light. Ooh, look at that art. Those are dinosaurs that are just like, ah, it's too bright. Ah. I mean, I think it's supposed to be a Hydra, but the idea of a whole bunch of dinosaurs having a party and then this asshole comes in and turns the lights on like the cop in the teen movie. All right, everyone, party's over, and we have a whole bunch of preteen drunken dinosaurs. Ah! Banishing Light. Two and a white. Enchantment. When Banishing Light enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls until Banishing Light leaves the battlefield. Hmm. This is, this is a very nice card. I'd give it like 4 out of 5. Um, so Prison Realm, you will recall, is the 3 mana exile a creature or a planeswalker until it leaves the battlefield. And you get to scry 1. That particular card was quite nice um, until white just continued to suck. And, you know, you have like Teferis and stuff like that. Vanishing Light still struggles with Teferi being, you know, the thing that bounces it. But the fact that this is a non-land permanent means that you can get some of the pesky enchantments, the pesky artifacts that something like Prison Realm couldn't get before. So, I mean, this is this is pretty nice. Um, this this feels to me like... Maybe, maybe it's closer to a 3 out of 5. This seems like a card that you might actually have 2, 3 copies of if you're really trying to get some white stuff in there. But, you know, another theme of this deck that, it, based upon my brief perusal of a lot of the other things... Um, there seems to be a lot more enchantment interaction. I don't know if that means that this will help Banishing Light because there's more ways to protect enchantments or whether it means that Banishing Light is going to be a little bit poo-poo. Uh, so I actually think accurately this is like three, maybe four. Um, it definitely has some real merit. The Birth of Miletus. Oh! Search your library for a basic planes card, reveal it, put it into your hand, then shuffle your library. Interesting. It helps us find a Lando. Second chapter, create an O4 colorless wall artifact creature token with Defender. O, oh, you gain two life. Oh, oh my god, I love this card. I mean, I'm probably going to give it a zero out of five, but let's actually evaluate what this card does. Let's evaluate what this card does. It is going to, it immediately turns itself into a planes. It then creates an 04 wall, and 4 toughness is a real inflection point. There are a substantial number of red deal 3 damage effects. There's a lot of like 3 2s and 3 3s and 3 4s that this will not be able to, or that will not be able to bust through this. Um, gain 2 life is, 
you know, it's like it's like whatever, it's a bonus. So, I mean, I think that this is like a one out of five still due to the fact that um, what would I rather do at two mana? Or would I rather just not have a Birth of Miletus and have something like this other card, like Banishing Light? I mean, it also, you, you, you're, you're, it's taking up a slot in the deck. So I think that for this needs to, um, I think this really needs a lot of other stuff built around it to do something. Like if you have stuff that procs off life gain, something like this. Uh, yeah, I mean, Yanish is comparing it to Charming Prince, which is a nice one to compare to. Charming Prince says that um, you can either gain three life, scry two, or flicker another creature slow. So this is, this is meh. Captivating Unicorn. Oh my god. Can we just give... Oh, let me center myself. Can we just give a shout out to the creative team? Captivating Unicorn is such an awesome name. Look at the pose of that unicorn. Just like, ooh. The unicorn is doing that thing that the gaggle of girls do in their sorority photos where they kick up a knee and they ooh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, God. Absolutely captivating. Of course, even included the Instagram filter on the outside for completionist sake. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, tap target creature and opponent controls. Not a good um, constructed card, even remotely. In limited, I would give this like a four out of five. I would love this one in limited, specifically due to the fact that there are a lot of enchantment creatures. Not just they are enchantments, they are, they are enchantment creatures. Uh, in Constructed, I would give this a zero. I don't actually think that tapping an individual creature has ever really been an especially powerful move in Constructed. Um, with some notable exceptions, you know, like White Weenie with the um, Giant Slayer. Where the Giant Slayer can, like, pay two mana and tap a dude. So, um... Again, maybe if there are a whole lot of good enchantment creatures, plausibly this could be a nice thing. But um, even so, five mana for a 4-4, four, four, and then next turn you actually get to tap stuff down. It just seems way too pricey for Constructed. So we're going to give that a hearty 0 out of 5 in Constructed. And yes, this is a Google presentation. Commanding Presence. Welcome to Day 9 TV. Enchantment Aura Enchanted Creature. Whenever a creature gets plus 2, plus 2. Or, excuse me, Enchanted Creature gets plus two, plus two, and has first strike. And, quote, whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. This is constructed zero out of five. And I feel like this is one of the prime examples of why enchantments, specifically auras, have historically been very kind of questionable. Now, let me just note, like, emotionally speaking, I love the idea of enchantments. Like, I love the idea of enchantments so much. Like, growing up, I loved paladin-like characters, played a paladin in Diablo 2. Yeah, hammered in, baby. I love the idea of giving something a buff or an enchantment or some sort of magical improvement to let you go out into battle. I think that's really cool. But imagine that on your turn four, you play this on a creature... You then attack, and your opponent just kills the creature. <sniffs> Traditionally, things like this have to go on hexproof creatures, something like this. And I wonder if there is a reasonable hexproof creature, something like that. Um, I don't know. I don't know. Hey, Neural 900, man, welcome. We're doing a real truth given review today. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. By the way, I am going to be going through this card review at uh, somewhat of a leisurely pace. So if you're here on YouTube, I want to let you know, don't miss all of my conversation with chat throughout because it's compelling. <laughs> Commanding Presence is a... Uh, it, could, it has some value in Construct, or excuse me, in Limited. Uh, but uh, constructed, which is where most of my my brain time goes, I'm going to give this a hearty zero out of five. Dawn Evangel. By the way, props to the uh, art team. You'll notice that if you go back to this commanding presence, look at the border. It's solid white. Look at this border. It's solid white. Dawn Evangel. 
look at the border. It's sparkly because this is an enchantment creature. I just like that. That's sort of just nice, that nice touch, that nice little bit of polish. Two and a white for the enchantment creature that is a human cleric. Whenever a creature dies, if an aura you controlled was attached to it, return target creature card. Converted mana cost two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Huh. So the creature, like the creature itself dies. It has an aura on it. So I can maybe even return that thing right back to my hand. This is absolutely a limited card. Um, it, it's a little, it is a little weird. I agree with your comment, Xernex. The, the reason it's a little weird is like, the, 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 if the creature dies and an aura is attached to it, do something with a, a completely different creature. Um, but the, the fact of the matter is, it's some way to get extra value and extra card draw, and that's something that I think is sort of always sought after in uh, limited formats, you know. Maybe not exclusively draw, but, you know, put two things from your graveyard back to your hand. These are the kind of things that, like, running a one of, like a soul salvage, has been comfortable in some limited decks. Anyways, moving on. Daxos, blessed by the sun. Oh, he's so regal. He's got his forearm buckler with his frown man on it. This is so beautiful. There's a lot of really gorgeous purple uh, colorings in these things. I mean, look at just the, the dazzling purple. Look at this unicorn, the dazzling purple. Oh, I'm such a purple fan. All right, legendary enchantment creature, demigod. Daxos's toughness is equal to your devotion to white. Whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life. Oh! Oh! Ooh. Okay. Okay, for any of you who don't know devotion, devotion is you count the number of white mana symbols. So Daxos, this guy gives you two white devotion because there's a white mana symbol, there's a white mana symbol. If you had Daxos and a Dawn Evangel out, you would have three total devotion because this white mana symbol gives you one and each of these white mana symbols give you one for a total of three. So Daxos will enter the battlefield at worst as a 2-2. Two -two. If um, you have one creature like a Hunted Witness, then you will have a 2-3. The fact that whenever another creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life, there is quite a good amount of um, quite a good amount of do interesting things with life gain for white in this set. So I would give Daxos four maybe even four and a half out of five you know why am i doing halves fuck halves halves are for cowards this is a five point scale and we only care about discrete integer quantities okay four out of five period i do think that daxos blessed by the sun appears to be a very nice sideboard card in many circumstances i can easily envision some sort of life gain white deck built around this um I'm probably super off on Daxos because it's easy to look at him and go, dude, he's a two mana, two, three. <sighs> but I'm going to confidently stick with my four out of five because I'm fucking smarter than you and that's not my problem. <sighs> Quickly, Sean, insult the viewers. Oh, we did it. Thank God we got out of that one. That was a narrow escape. Daybreak Chimera. Or as I used to call it as a child, Chimera. Three and double white. The spell costs X less to cast where X is your devotion to white. Oh! A whole new card. Daybreak Chimera is the kind of top end for a white weenie deck that um, I, I'm really interested in. So the comparison I'm going to make um, to Daybreak Chimera is the Venerated Loxodon. The Venerated Loxodon is four and one white with Convoke, which means I can tap my white creatures to reduce the mana cost down. Again, basically, I can cheat out a uh, Venerated Loxodon. But one of the agony elements of a Venerated Loxodon is sometimes with white weenie constructions, you want to be attacking, 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 attacking. If you have three creatures out, you can then 
just play the Daybreak Chimera for two and still attack with all the dudes, and you have a 3-3 flyer, which can go over the top, which is quite nice. And for any of you who are curious um, the way that Devotion interacts with this, first of all, this thing provides two Devotion once it's on the field, to answer that question. But secondly, Daybreak Chimera uh, can never cost less than double white because it can cost X less to cast, which is different than saying it costs one less white mana to cast. So, I would give this a 3 out of 5. I do not think that this is like a bone-crushing strong card, but I think that it is acceptable enough. Um, I think that there's enough good white weenie cards that um, maybe you might even have a, a, a white weenie flyer only deck, because you do have things like the Loyal Pegasus, the Healer's Hawk, Fairy Godmother, or Guide Mother, or whatever her name is, and Daybreak Chimera. You can maybe even have nothing on the ground. Uh, but I give it a 3 out of 5. White Weenie is kind of a funky archetype in that when it's good, it feels really nice to play and you can get a lot of free wins. And when it's not good, it's like you lose unimaginably easily. So that's why I'm kind of giving it a 3 out of 5. Dreadful Apathy. Oh, look, it's a whole bunch of Twitch viewers. Two and white, Enchant Creature. Enchanted Creature can't block or attack. And you can pay a little more and exile it. Ooh! This is a limited all-star. Oh! By the way, don't think I'm calling out you specifically. I, too, watch Twitch. And let me tell you what it's like. It's 8 p.m. And I think, ooh, I could work on something productive. I could maybe engage in a little self-care. I don't know, do a clay mask and sit there and focus on my breath. Perhaps I could do something about my own skill set improvement. I'm interested in just learning more about physics interfacing with multiplayer networking. Should I start on that? No. I don't know. I think what I'll do is I'll open up Twitter and Reddit until I'm mildly irritated and then chase it down with an hour of grinding Twitch streams. And this is exactly how I look climbing into bed at the end of a mediocre evening. So, if you don't relate to that, don't watch my stream. Um, historically, three mana. This dude can't attack or block. <laughs> historically, three mana. This thing can't attack or block is a very sought-after uh, card type in Limited. The fact that you can exile the enchanted creature is a very nice way to say, Hey, we're Limited. I don't really have a lot of ways to spend my mana on this turn. I'll just kill the creature that this is on to make sure it is never going to be around. Uh, there's a number of creatures that, because they are like enchantment creatures or creatures that just provide passive effects and things like that, um, this is a very nice way to just get those things off. Eidolon of Obstruction. Insert political joke now. A 2-mana, two 2-1 two with first strike. Loyalty abilities of Planeswalkers your opponent control costs one more to activate. Five out of five! Oh my god, what an awesome, awesome card. This is an all-star. An absolute bone crusher. Um, there is a plausibility that this card is just seen in sideboards. Uh, but there are enough planeswalkers running around that the Eidolon of Obstruction really takes a fat dump on a number of plays you can do with planeswalkers. And let me explain this for a quick moment. Typically, planeswalkers are balanced around the idea of if it's out there long enough, it has some compounding effect. Most notably, Nissa. She comes out, she makes a 3-3. If she keeps coming out, she keeps making more 3-3s. And if she stays out, then she can keep generating mana. And if you stay out long enough to get the ultimate, then whoa, so many forests and whatever. And one of the sort of key things underneath that of if they're out long enough, they get a compounding advantage is, well, if I play it and I can only do something once and then it dies, maybe it feels a little less than great. For instance, I play a Narset for three, I look at the top few cards in my library, put a non-creature into my hand, and then it dies. Well, I basically replace Narset with this other card. Eh, it's okay. So lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of Planeswalkers just quietly have this assumption, well, if I play it, at least I'll get to do one thing before it dies. And I mean, you'll, you'll hear players say this all the friggin' time. Eidolon of Obstruction now deletes 
a lot of the efi uh, efficiency and effectiveness of three and four mana planeswalkers. Or if you are building up a board um, and you lose some creatures and then you play an Eidolon, playing a five or six mana planeswalker, suddenly they need to pay one to be able to do anything and you get an extra turn to get a little momentum back in there. So um, this is so, so strong. This is so strong. If you get two of these out, notice this is not a legendary creature. It's just rare. So now you can get two of them out and it's plus two. So this card is a five out of five. I love this thing. And of course, it fits suitably into many ideas that people already explore with white. White weenie, uh, white creature-based decks. It has first strikes, so it's very good at countering creature-based decks. First strike is an extremely strong keyword in aggro versus aggro. So, I mean, it already has utility there. I mean, hell yes. And now I will eat a slice of chicken, but mute it, because I know that 10% of the population gets grossed out. Excellent. Man, let me tell you, that is some tough chicken. That is some tough chicken. I bought it yesterday. <laughs> Made it for lunch. It is tough chicken. It is actually, it is like old, surly, cop, leathery tough chicken, man. It is, it is rough. Elspeth Conquereth Death. This is a very challenging card to say if you have a lisp. Exile target permanent. An opponent controls with converted mana cost three or greater. There's something about text like that that melts my processing capabilities. Whenever I look at that, I immediately think power or toughness or cost, they all get conflated in my mind. Um, exiling something that costs three or greater is a very nice effect because that's most big threatening cards. And it's also a permanent in opponent controls. So this hits Planeswalkers, this hits Hits a lot of things, which is nice. Okay. Number two, non-creature spells your opponent casts cost two more to cast until your next turn. Excellent. Wow. If you can get this out, if you can get this puppy out, you basically choke your opponent out on turn two. Cool. Return target creature card, excuse me, target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Put a plus one, plus one counter or a loyalty counter on it. Holy shit. Five. This is an exceptional card. This is an exceptional card. Um, I'm going to go in reverse order. So return target creature or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield and make it bigger. Notice this is not quite... Um, Oh my god, I can't... What, what was the old Black Saga? Jesus. I can't believe I'm forgetting it. Um, Eldest Reborn. Ooh, can't believe that one left my brain. Eldest Reborn could also put an enemy card, an enemy graveyard card, onto the battlefield under your control. Elspeth Conquers Death does not quite have that flexibility. But this does a lot of the similar things. First of all, exiling a big permanent. Great. Delaying your opponent with number two because everything's more expensive. Great. Bringing something back from the graveyard, great. The weakness of Elspeth Conquer's Death is fairly obvious. This sucks against aggro decks. Number one doesn't do anything. Number two often doesn't do anything. Number three is often too late. Um, the, the second one, non-creature spells your opponent casts, costs two more to cast until your next turn. I actually think that's secretly more potent than it looks because it's easy to go, oh, Eldest Reborn was kill a thing, then the, the enemy discards a thing, and then you bring back a thing. Uh, but Elspeth Conquers Death, if you have already solved the problem of being able to play the expensive card, many control decks have ways to solve the problem of playing the expensive card, then you get to the, the uh, chapter two of the saga, which then immediately makes it harder for your opponent to prevent you from playing another big card. So, like, this obviously sits very nicely in a control deck, so if you get this out, this is sort of like a second turn where you're less worried about counters. Um, 
and I think that's especially good. This uh, could very well be something that is not a four of include in many decks, but uh, could even be a sideboard card, but still its impact is so significant that I think that um, it's hard for me to not give this a five. <laughs> Lockmeister M says, but wait, Teferi shuts down counters. Ghost Talker, go ahead and give Lockmeister Emma one second timeout. Show him who the boss is, right? I wear the big boy pants in this uh, stream, even though I'm wearing translucent green shorts. All right. My buttons. My buttons. Elspeth, son's nemesis, with inkiness splaying all across her name. Two and a pair of whites. Legendary Planeswalker Elfbeth. Minus one. Up to two target creatures you control each get plus two, plus one till end of turn. Interesting. You can also create two one, one white human soldier creature tokens. Okay. You can also gain three, or excuse me, gain five life for a minus three. Huh. Escape for six. Exile four other cards from your graveyard. Okay, before we begin to think about and process this, I want to give a cheers to Sacriel and all the members of the 42nd, all 3,664 of you. Welcome. We are, we are doing nothing but providing the truth of exactly how Theros Beyond Death will function when it drops on Thoe's Day. Mm -hmm. Also, Sacriel... I was wondering if you'd have, have any interest of showing me the ropes and escape from Tarkov, because I, I know nothing about how the game really functions. I know the hand-wavy pitch of it, but I've been seeing you sit in a corner, look, and not move for 20 minutes, and then exit and go, oh my god, that was tense. And I want to be part of that experience, you know? All right. Let's come back to analyzing Elfbeth Thumb Nemethith. This is a weird card because the escape is essentially a way to say, like, imagine you're a white weenie deck. We play out our hand and we end with an Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, which all on her own can make a whole bunch of white human soldier creature tokens, which is a very nice threat. And then when Elspeth dies, you get to bring her back and get to make some more dudes. So, I mean, this appears to, at first glance, just sit very nicely in the white weenie type of um, structure. I don't know if it's too slow for white weenie though, because it is a four cost card. Um, it also has an advantage of helping us in the versus aggro matchup because we can gain five life. Anytime I see something that appears to be suitable in an aggressive circumstance, and then I see an es uh, something that costs six, like this escape cost, I get a little bit leery, you know? I'm like, why are we getting all hyped up about spending six mana? Could be full of shit. Castle Ardenvale can spend five effective mana to make a 1-1. One, one. And, eh, you know, meh. Elspeth Sun's Nemesis, therefore, doesn't necessarily seem appropriate for, like, full-on white weenie, but maybe for, like, a little bit more of a mid-rangey thing. Maybe some more of this mid-range Healy white stuff we've been seeing. I'm going to give Elspeth a three, though. Um... I think the strongest effect for Elspeth is the create two one one white human soldier creature tokens, but I think this is I think this is a I think this is a fine fine planeswalker. I think this is just fine. I think this is fine. I think it's fine. It, it does not freak me out, but I think it's fine. Hell, maybe maybe I'm actually full of shit. Maybe if you had three Elspeths and four Gideons in the sideboard, you'd go against a control deck and just slowly grind them out with waka waka wakas. Also, I guess that um, this is a very nice way to get around counter bullshit because you can one for two an enemy control deck. Doop. I said doop. Favored of Iroas. Two and a white for a creature, human soldier. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, favored of Iroas gains double strike until end of turn. And it's just a two two. Completely fine on curve limited card this is just not a constructed card uh, a 2-2 two -two for 3 needs some real real upside if you want to be playing it in constructed something like Judith um, I, I would not even necessarily describe it as a bomb in limited due to the fact that it is a 2-2 two -two and 
you know, maybe if you enchant it and begin to bonk inward. It's double striking for four, something like that. It, 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 see, it, needs, it needs some help. I think that a lot of times your opponent is going to have a single 2-3 and favorite of Iroas is going to look pretty flaccid. Oh, i got to give it a rating. Uh, constructed 0 out of 5. Limited uh, 2 or 3 out of 5. No, I have to commit. 3 out of 5 is what I'm going to say. Flicker of Fate. Oh my god, look at that heart. Oh! One and a white. Instant exile target creature or enchantment. Then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Huh. Huh. Huh? Huh. Processing. 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 Okay. Okay. Oh. <sighs> Let's talk about some of the obvious things you can do with Flicker of Fate. I have a really good saga. And right when it gets, right when I'm worried that it's going to pop and go to the graveyard, I can flicker it and start the saga over again. You can also do something like if my opponent has mind control to creature, you know, agent to treachery, some stuff like that. You can flicker whatever they nabbed and then it comes back under your control. Um, traditionally, this type of effect is when you have some kind of enter the battlefield creature that is outstanding. And you wanna be able to just get that enter the battlefield effect multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, but often it's other creatures flickering a friendly creature that is very desirable. Flicker of Fate itself seems very weak. Seems very weak. So I would give it a 2 out of 5. I would give it a 2 out of 5. There's another potential way in which Flicker of Fate could be good which is like if I have a saga and it's on chapter two and before it gets sacked after hitting chapter three, before that happens, I flicker it, it comes back, resets the saga, and then there's another thing on the battlefield with constellation. So that thing with constellation also triggers. So I'm doing like a lot of triggers in there. Um, I would still give this a two out of five. I'd give it like a two out of five. It, it really badly needs lots of support. Lots and lots and lots of support. The art is gorgeous, though. Five out of five art. Moving on. Glory bearers. At first I thought it said gory bearers. <laughs> and I was about to be like, ah, whoopsie daisies, that's not the best. Gory bearers. Three and a white. Enchantment creature that says whenever another creature you control attacks, it gets plus O oh, plus one until end of turn. This is a very stable limited card. It's expensive. But it is a 3-4, and I do like 4 toughness as a big inflection point in the limitednesses. Um, I, I would still give this like 2-3. Yeah, probably 3. This is, again, it's just like a curved card. I'd be like, oh, okay, knight. Nice, nifty. Nifty, thrifty. Um, it's fine. It's totally fine. Constructed 0 out of 5. I'll never see play. Heliod, Sun Crown. I revealed this card. 5 out of 5. Are you kidding me? Can we just take a moment to give a nod to Wizards about how absolutely... Luck as fuck your pal Day9 has been with his card reveals. Questing Beast. Field of the Dead. Okay. I guess I did reveal just some some boars. But those are good, right? And then I got Heliod, Sun Crown. Heliod Sun Crown. Legendary enchantment creature. It is a god. Indestructible 5-5. Five, five. Oh! <laughs> Marik says, as you can see, Day 9's rating is even on the card as its power and toughness. Ah, nice catch. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to white is less than 5, Heliod isn't a creature. 
Whenever you gain life, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature or enchantment you control. One on a white, another target creature gains lifelink until end of turn. Oh! Mmm. Mmm. Do you remember me talking about a mono white flyers deck? Healing Hawk that already has lifelink. Daxos. Double white. Whenever a creature you control enters the battlefield or dies, you gain one life, which continues to proc the Heliob. And remember me talking about the Daybreak Chimera as a way to get two extra devotion onto the battlefield while reducing the cost? You could play Heliod and have some small creatures slam a Daybreak Chimera, and all of a sudden your devotion to white is five. Very, very, very quickly. So I, I'm going to give this a, an absolute five out of five. I just love all the gods. I think gods are awesome. I love these gods. So, um, also, it's an enchantment creature, which procs the constellation keyword. So, I mean, just a 5-5 five, five indestructible swonking in that's putting plus one, plus one counters on all of my creatures already. I really think that, like, an aggro to mid-range, like, mono-white deck is, is, is absolutely tickling my pickle there, man. Oh. Heliod's Intervention. <gasps> Did you know my favorite type of mana cost is X? as a ramper lover. I love ramping. I love ramping so much. Anytime I see X, my little eyebrows go up and I go, mm-hmm. Heliod's intervention. X and two white. Choose one. Destroy X target artifacts and or enchantments. Target player gains twice X life. It's instant. Fuck! Holy fuck! Six out of five. Erection out of five. Praise be to design team out of five. Holy... Oh my god! Okay, destroy X, target artifacts, and or instance. <gasps> target player gains twice X life. You can put this in your main deck, and if you're up against a control deck, artifacts and enchantments are already all the fuck over the place in the... My god, I'm drooling. They're already all the fuck over the place in this dang set. Um, what, sorry, no, no. They're already all over the place in standard. And then, in this set, there are enchantment creatures, so you can actually destroy those creatures with this. <laughs> and then, like, destroy X artifacts, I hate your cat decks, see you later, alligators. There's so many control and mid-range and enchantment-focused things that this takes an enormous dump on. And then, just in case you're against aggro, you can gain twice X life. <gasps> yes, look at Heliod's intervention. Look at this. Let me tell you something. This is exactly what the scrutiny of the internet feels like whenever you post a comment, man. Like, right there. It just feels like Twitter descends and is like, I don't agree with what you're saying there. Like, this is you looking at my gameplay in Magic the Gathering. And because this card's good enough, I'll allow it. This card is the best card I've seen. Holy crap. It, uh... Given that it is a little bit targeted with artifacts and enchantments, I don't think that it's going to be a four of copy. I think that it could even just be something that is, like, sideboardable. Um, but, I mean, it's such an absolute wreck for um for so many archetypes. I mean, this, this, makes you, this makes you want to play white, which is something that has not been said in Magic um, ever. So this is really good. This makes me... This makes me want to be a white knight. Heliod's Pilgrim. Two and a white. When Heliod's Pilgrim enters the battlefield, you may search your library for an aura card. Reveal it, put it into your hand, and shuffle your library, and it's a one, two, for three. Boo. I'm going to give it a constructed one out of five, because a one, two, for three is a big suck. Uh, limited, it has merit, given that this is not look for an enchantment. This is look for a aura card. So it has to be something that gets cast on a creature, which we already... Eh, some questionable things. Um, so, I mean, I, I, I'm going to say... I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 in Constructed, because I'm sure one person will figure out one aura-based deck. 
that will have some impact in gold. But um Yeah, this is a big this is this is this is, this is a one. This is a one. Limited, maybe a two. Heliod's punishment. Oh this art. This art, this art, this art. One and a white. Enchant creature, Heliod's punishment enters the battlefield with four task counters on it. Enchanted creature can't attack or block, and it loses all abilities and has tap. Remove a task counter from Heliod's punishment. Then if it has no task counters on it, destroy Heliod's punishment. Absolute 5 out of 5 in limited. This is a 5 out of 5 limited card. What do I think about this in constructed? Probably zero. Probably zero. Um, there are effects that, that are things like Devout Decree, Exile. Um, there are even simpler things like the Giant Slayer, Giant Killer, where you can kill a thing and then play a thing and you can like tap it down, which is effectively what Heliod's Punishment is doing. Yeah, I'd give this a zero in Constructed. The reason this is so good limited is that um, it's effectively a two-mana removal. Um, so you can just you can just get something out of the way and continue to harm the enemy. You can harm the enemy. You can harm the hero of the pride, Snarl. Oh yeah, look at this. One and a white. Whenever you cast a spell that targets hero of the pride, creatures you control get plus one plus zero oh until end of turn. Hmm. It is a cat. This is um. Because it is a cat, and Noxious has put me on to cats in this game, um, I am suddenly aware of the cat keyword more so than I am of any other keyword. A 2-2 two, two for 2 is the most bland card that you go, eh, it's fine. Um, whenever you cast a spell that targets Hero of the Pride, that would include enchantments, instants, or sorceries. Um, creatures you control get plus 1, plus 0. Oh. It's it's a fine constructed card, zero out of five in. Excuse me, it's a fine limited card, zero out of five in constructed, due to the fact that giving things plus one plus zero oh, under a very specific condition that you often don't have. Like if you are a white weenie deck, you typically have creatures or things that say affect all creatures. You rarely ever have things that say target a specific creature. So I'm gonna give this a calm zero out of five shall never be seen hero of the winds three and a white creature human soldier flying whenever you cast a spell that targets hero of the winds creatures you control get plus one plus oh until end of turn ditto whatever i said on the last card yeah i think <laughs> it's kind of like the same as the last card except a little bit more mediocre it flies and it has art that reminds me of the movie crawl do you guys remember the movie Crawl? Someone was like, all right, this guy, he has like a, oh, what is this spinny thing? Shuriken? And he can like hold his hand and he can like make the shuriken spin. And they tried to take like five novels worth of ideas and fit them into an 80 minute fantasy movie. And it was also about aliens. I mean, it is like aliens come to a fantasy world and like destroy and enslave everyone and everything and there's a castle with the alien king in it and it's at a new place every single day and there's a hero that has a cadre of like 20 characters that we're supposed to care about all the time and they're all going to try to go save the princess that the alien king wants to marry i mean it's like every idea made it it's so great i think everyone dies in it but it's oh it's really great i should go watch that man. i should go watch that thing again uh, here are the wins. Uh, I'd give it a 0 out of 5. I don't even know if I would want it in a limited one. There's only 1 out of 5 in that. How do you spell that? K-R-U-L-L. Krull. Krull. Idyllic Tutor. 2 and a white. Search your library for an enchantment card. Reveal it and put it into your hand. Then reshuffle your library. Um, I think I have to give this 2 or 3 out of 5. I mean, I'll probably say... Probably say 3 out of 5. Probably. The art's beautiful. Um, the, the reason I'm going to say, I feel like I have to give it a 3 out of 5. Because anytime you are searching your library for a very specific thing, 
it immediately becomes something of merit. For instance, Fires of Invention decks, which make up the largest share of decks currently played in the meta, re uh, rely on a four mana enchantment called Fires of Invention. And those decks often run several Shimmer of Possibilities, which is a card where you look at the top three and put one into your hand. So Idyllic Tutor is a way to basically, you could run two Idyllic Tutors in there, and that is effectively the same as running six Fires of Inventions. So I re this is the sort of thing that I feel like I have to give it a three out of five, because I can immediately think of the most popular deck using this in an extremely useful way. So um, I don't know. Absolutely inspired art, though. I mean, that's, this, is, this is incredible. Indomitable Will. Look at the size of that centaur in the back. Yeah! One and a white. Flash, chain creature. Chain creature gets plus one, plus two. Nice limited card. Not nice constructed card. The reason this is a nice limited card is that it's just a combat trick that combat sticks. You can have your, you know, your 2-2 two -two double striker come on in. Swing, your opponent blocks, buffs their dude, and then you imblomitable uh, will <laughs> on your dude, make it a 3-4 with double strike, and then smack on in. So this, this actually think is an incredibly desirable limited card. Let's not forget that um, it is an enchantment, so it procs all the constellation keyword effects. So I'd give this like 4 out of 5 in limited. I, I love this card. Love, love, love this card in limited. Constructed, 0 out of 5. Ding! It's my favorite number to give things. Karametra's Blessing. One white instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. If it's an enchanted creature or enchantment creature, it also gains hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Huh. I think we're going to see this get run with Feather. I mean, I literally am looking at this, and I'm like, this is this is for Feather players. So for any of you who don't know, Feather is a card that says whenever you cast an instant, uh, I believe it's instant or sorcery that targets one of your friendly creatures, you just get it back into your hand at the end of the turn. So I think that if there is some way to enchant Feather, Karametra's Blessing becomes a very nice way to just give it hexproof and indestructible. So I, I think that this is, it requires enough extra setup that I'm going to give it a two or three out of five, maybe two out of five, because I just don't think where it's going to show up anywhere other than feather, feather, feather. Lagana Band Storyteller, three and a white. First of all, that name is a mouthful and I love it. It's a centaur advisor. <gasps> Advisory lands! When Lagana Band Storyteller enters the battlefield, you may put target enchantment card from your graveyard on top of your library. If you do, you gain life equal to its converted mana costs. Very nice limited card. It is a 3-4 for 3, which is nice. Nice, 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 nice. Um, constructed, not a chance. Not even remotely going to be an acceptable card. Um, 0 out of 5. Like, the idea of this enters and then I get the chance to redraw and recast it is an extraordinarily slow effect. Um, so, ugh. Yeah, no, I mean, 0 out of 5 for Constructed, just due to the fact that it's a 3-4 creature that on the battlefield is just a 3-4 creature for 4. Eh. Um, okay, now here's a question. What do we think about... Laganaban Storyteller, if I am like an Azorius control deck, and what I'm trying to do is play a Saga, and when the Saga's done, I Laganaban Storyteller to put that enchantment back on top. Zero. Zero, 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 zero. The reason I'm saying zero here is that you have to put the enchantment on top of your library, so, which is very different from put it into your hand. I like to think of the idea of like different tri types of draws that exist. The most basic is draw a card, Shoop, goes into the hand. Uh, a more abstract version of draw is put something from your graveyard into your hand. You're, you're getting more cards to work with. It's just not from your library. So whenever I, um, 
or something that says search your library for a whatever and put it back in. So this doesn't, it, it isn't any form of draw. It's just replace your draw with a thing that's in the graveyard. So it feels extraordinarily clunky. For that reason, I'm gonna give it a zero out of five. Um, zero out of five. It's just, it's so, so niche. Leonin of the Lost Pride, one in white. When the owner of the Lost Pride dies, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. Uh, I mean, a 3 1 for th 2 is an aggressive stat line that we see infrequently show up in uh, Limited. But, I mean, it dies to everything. It can sometimes trade up, it often trades down. Uh, absolutely no constructed playability. It is a cat warrior, so we're excited to see kitty cats because I am obsessed with my own cats and cats broadly speaking. But, um,. I just don't even see it having any synergy with anything, and it doesn't need to. It's just nice constructive filler. Nyxborn Courser. This is actually a very nice limited card. This is a stealth nice limited card. Oh my god, actually, this is an extremely nice limited card. I, I didn't get 4 out of 5 in limited. Uh, first of all, 0 out of 5 in uh, constructed because it just it, it's a vanilla 2-4 for 3. We want more juice and more meat. But the reason this is so nice in Limited is, first of all, let's look at the stat line. 2-4, lots of stuff does 3 damage. Lots and lots and lots and lots of stuff does 3 damage. Um, so Nyxborn Courser is an absolutely spectacular blocker. Um, it's 3 mana, which is relatively cheap. 2, two white is a little um, tricky to get to with super consistency, but I think you're happy to play him even on turn 4 or 5. But notably, it's an enchantment creature. Vanilla creatures often have this property where you want to play them on curve because all they are are stats. And the sooner you can get those stats down, the better. When you top deck a Nyxborn Courser, let's say on turn 7, 8, 9, the fact that this is an enchantment creature means it can likely proc one of the several constellation cards you have. And that's one of the reasons why I love it so much. I mean, it's a very nice blocker, very nice guarantee of aggression denial. And you're, you're not even disappointed to draw it late uh, as much as you would be with a vanilla 2-4. So that, that seems quite nice. Constructed, nope out of five. Omen of the Sun. Oh, God, this art. This art is so good that I'm going to eat a piece of chicken. I permit myself one bite every 15 minutes. Omen of the Sun, two and a white. Enchantment with flash, nice. When it enters the battlefield, create two one one white human and soldier creature tokens and you gain two life. Sack Omen of the Sun is cry two. I think this is a very interesting, flexible little baby um, limited card. Let's not forget it is an enchantment, so it procs constellation. It also just makes some one ones gain some life Let's just scry me. It's it's pretty basic. It's pretty basic. It um, reminds me of what was what was the one in in um, Guilds of Ravnica that was white and two that was make two one one life linkers. This this reminds me of that card. Um, Raise the alarm is the one in a white make two regular one ones. Sworn Companions, that's the one. Sworn Companions, Sworn Companions, Sworn Companions, Sworn Companions, Sworn Companions. I think that uh, Omen of the Sun is kind of similar in power level to Sworn Companions, which was fine, which was totally fine. So, um, I think this card is fine limited. Zero out of five in Constructed. It's slow, only makes a pair of 1-1s. One uh, the sack again to scry, you'll probably want to be wanting to spend your, spend your mana elsewhere. Bam. Phalanx Tactics, one in a white. Instant target creature you control gets plus two, plus one until end of turn. Each other creature you control gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Wow.
Huh. Okay, so um, this is an absolutely solid card in Limited. Often when you are building a deck, you'll have just a lot of creatures that are solid. You'll have your excellent removal spells and your bombs in there. And then you'll want to have a couple of cards that help you support some sort of stalled board state blowout. Like Cosmotronic Wave to swing in without blocks. Um, Phalanx Tactics. I have a bunch of creatures. Give one, plus two, plus one. Give everyone else plus one, plus one. This, this could be compelling. I don't think that this is ever going to be something that I'm going to want to run in Constructed because I have, like, Unbreakable Formation, for, where for just one more mana, I'm giving everything plus one, plus one permanently and indestructible. And would I ever really want to do a mass defensive plus one, plus one? Maybe. Um, it has some interesting synergy, as K10 Diskin's pointing out, with that cat in the past. The cat that's like, anytime you target me with a spell, I give everyone plus one, plus one. Unbreakable isn't permanent, is it? It is. It's permanent plus one, plus one counter if you cast during your main phase. Pious Wayfarer. Dude, I love this like sparkly constellation-y stuff everywhere. Oh! Pious Wayfarer. Ooh, it's a one-two for one. Oh! Uh -huh. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. Very mediocre. Meaty, meaty, mediocre. Oh, meaty, meaty, mediocre. This is fine. This is not great. No one's ever gotten hyped about a 1-2. Don't bring up that guy. I know. What's his name? Dark Hallow Fuckface. What's his name? Deathrite Shaman. There we go. <laughs> I feel like I captured his essence better than the creator's. Ah, oh, there we go. Yeah. Night of the Ebon Legion. Oh yeah, that's another good. That's another good one. Yeah, no, I was talking about um, Dark Hollow Fuckface, the banned big bad boy. He's free, and you can tap him to do anything to a permanent you want. I think was the card text. I might be uh, missing some details there, but that's more or less what he did. Um, okay. I mean, this is fine. It's a one-two. <laughs> Who can conditionally barely buff someone? <laughs> Reverent Hoplite. That's you. Four and a white. Creature, human soldier. When a reverent hoplite enters the battlefield, create a number of 1-1 one, one white human soldier tokens equal to your devotion to white. <sighs> okay, so when reverent hoplite enters the battlefield, if I have like four devotion, it's going to be a 1-2 with Four one ones. <gasps> mm. In limited, I I'm actually kind of excited about this one. In limited, I'm actually kind of excited. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna shut my door a little bit because there's loudness. There's loudness in there. There's loudness. There's loudness. There's loudness. Uh -oh. I will shut the door. All right, so in limited, often you'll get into a situation where things are just a little bit clogged, and being able to blast down a reverent hoplite, um, it itself gives you one devotion, so it at least is a 1-2 and a 1-1, one, one, which totally sucks, but if you have like two, I mean getting three 1-1s one, and a 1-2 is kind of nice. If there's some way to flicker this, make it exit and enter. Ooh, you can see all the one ones coming in. Um, the reason why I'm going to give this a zero out of five in constructed is the following. Typically, you are looking for things, particularly in white, you are looking for things that are resilient to your board getting destroyed or messed with, as opposed to something like this that leverages your board being huge. Typically, you want to have things that are resilient to being messed with. So for instance, flyers, resilient to getting blocked. Hunted witness, when it dies, it summons a 1-1. One, one. Tithe taker, when it dies, it summons a 1-1. One, one. You want things that are resilient. Raise the alarm. I can do it at the end of turn. If, if they uh, sweep my board at end of turn, boom, I can play some 1-1s. One, it's resilient to getting um, messed with. 
And so a Reverent Hoplite is the kind of card where I play a 1-1, one, one, and then on turn 2 I play another pair of 1-1s, one, and then on turn 3 maybe I do some stuff. Turn 4, my opponent kills off a bunch of my stuff with a Sweeper. And then you play a Reverend Hoplite, and it's like... Pseudopanda says, I think this card is what you'd call win more. I think that it is pending analysis appropriate to use, but let me go on a rant about buzzwords. Buzzwords, like, oh, this is totally win more. Oh, God, oh, health is a resource. You know, these, these phrases can be valuable shorthand to communicate certain ideas without repeating yourself all the time. But often you're compacting a large amount of information and shrinking it into this small phrase. And way too frequently, especially in the age of social media, you have to be aware that this word means substantially different things to different people and often encompasses more than what it was originally intended for. And so it's essential to spend time using the actual words in the circumstance, you know. So for instance, a 1616 with indestructible is a win more card. Reverend Hoplite is a win more card. Are they win more in the same way? No. Why? Let's go into the explanation. 1616 with indestructible is so expensive that if you can even get to the point where you can cast it, you've almost certainly won the game. So instead of doing a 16-16 with Indestructible, play something that's way cheaper that you can cast way sooner to help you out so that we don't have to wait so damn long to get there. And that's what we mean by win more. You've already won the game. You've already denied everything that they could do when you do that. Right? That's an example. This is, this is win more in a different way. So that's why I like to actually use the explanation. Because also Reverend Hoplite is not necessarily a win more card in general because, as we just discussed in Limited, Limited games can stalemate on the board far more frequently than standard games can. And therefore, this has a lot of use in that particular circumstance. So that's why I want to... Um, that's why I like to rely more on explanations than on buzzwords, with one very, very, very notable exception. How often have you heard me be like, it's time to define a term. And then I define the term right there so I can use it for a 20-minute rant. Oh, I love that. That's what we call getting mathematical. <gasps> Ooh. Let's define some terms, baby. Mmm. Mmm. So, so anyways, that's that's my, my thought on that. Boink. Revoke existence. <laughs> All right, whenever my alarm goes off and I pull the blinds and the sun comes in for the first time, I am precisely this purple dude. I feel like I'm being interrogated by a star. Ah, I just wanted to sleep. Fuck, man. Exile target artifact or enchantment. Sorcery speed. Too slow. Two mana to kill a thing, too slow. I believe that there is already a card that is legal in standard that is one in a white to destroy an artifact or enchantment at instant speed. And that is disenchant. I think I've remembered everything correct. You labeled everything correct. The one thing to note, though, is that this does say exile, not destroy. It does say exile. All the gods in this set are enchantment creatures that are indestructible. So, has merit in... Has some merit, man. Has some merit. Has some merit. So I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to give it a 1 out of 5 in Constructed and a 2 out of 5 in Limited because it's just so narrow. I am a kind god killer. Rumbling Sentry. Oh, look at this big boy. Oh, look at Oscar the Grouch. Oh, this looks exactly like someone who works in retail and hates their life and doesn't respect any of the work that they do, so they take it out on customers. Look at this guy. Excuse me, ma'am. That's nowhere near the section you're looking for. Rumbling Sentry, 3 and 2 white. Rumbling Sentry enters battlefield, scry 1. Not constructed, 0 out of 5 for constructed, but is a fine card in limited. Absolutely fine. 5 mana for a 3 6 with some scry. Seems fine. Seems absolutely fine. 
What kind of bubbly water is that? Lemon ginger. Lemon ginger bubbly water. Sentinel's eyes. Oh, yes. Oh, look at those eyeballs. Sentinel's eyes. One white. Enchanted creature. Enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and has vigilance. And you can escape. This is, this is a solid little card. This is a solid little card. Yeah, are you uncomfortable? Am I uncomfortable? Are we all uncomfortable? Wow. I mean, you can't help but gaze at those eyes, man. Those are nice. Ooh, this is a good angle, too. All right, Enchanted Creature gets vigil plus one, plus one Vigilance. Um, this, is a, this is a fine card in Limited because this is what I mean by a type of card draw. I play this card, it does something, and then I can play it again from the graveyard. It's kind of like having an extra card in hand when it's in your graveyard. And I'm always... Uh, eager and looking for m more things like this. Doesn't do anything particularly special, but, um, you know, seems solid, seems solid. I can especially remember, or imagine more enchantment constellation-y focused white limited decks uh, hunting for this. So, seems good, seems good. Shadow the Sky. Each player who controls a creature with power four or greater draws a card, then destroy all creatures. Huh. So, here's what I do like about this. This is a four mana destroy all creatures in just white. All right. So, I could, I don't know, let's just pick an archetype at random here. If I am a Naya ramp deck that doesn't want to try to uh, do the Bone Crusher, not the Bone Crusher Giant, the um, Realm Cloaks Giant. I can just shatter the sky. So, it's also really nice because um, there's a lot of sweepers that have white that need another color. Time swipe. Time, Jesus. Time wipe is double white and blue. Kaya's Wrath is double white and double black. So, Shadow of the Sky, I feel like, is a much wanted for much wished for, much weird sentence constructed for, kind of card. Um, so what do I give this? I would give this 4 out of 5 in Constructed. I'd even give it like uh, 4 out of 5, in, maybe 5 out of 5 in Limited. Destroy all of everything is sometimes questionable in Limited because you don't want to blow up your own shit. Like if you're a very aggro, I'm going to play a whole bunch of enchantments kind of deck. Uh, you don't want to shoot yourself in the foot, uh, but... You know, destroying all of everything is a nice effect to have when boards are clogged. Sunming Pegasus, three and a white, flying, two, three. Sunming Pegasus gains vigilance and lifelink until end of turn. 100,000% constructed. No one's going to get uh, fist pumping up and uppity. Paying four mana for a two, three flyer. No one even cares about that. Zero out of five constructed. Two out of five? In limited? Flyers just can sometimes win a game all on their own. Sometimes they can just win a game all on their own. Um, oh, I'm stretching. Wow. With this camera angle, my body looks like Gumby. What is happening? Holy crap. I just, my body became a tube. That was the, let's do that again. Let's see this one more time. What is this angle? Oh my god. Yeah, because I mean, like, with the way my camera's set up, like, if I just hold my body at certain angles, it kind of, like, distorts and warp things because I have, like, super wide angle. But, um, wow. Yeah, who let Adam Driver onto the stream? That's right. It's your, it's your thick boy, Dan I. <laughs> yeah, flyers can sometimes just win games in Limited, but, I mean, it's a 2-3 flyer. It's so, it's so tiny. Lifelink is kind of relevant in Limited because if you're in a race situation, flyers suck as blockers. Lifelong can give you that lifelong dream of winning a single game in Limited. So yeah, maybe three out of five in Limited. Taranika, Crowen Veteran. One and two white. I'm already getting excited. Vigilance and it's a 3-3. Three, three. Oh! Whenever Taranika, a crow and veteran, attacks, untap another target creature you control until end of turn that creature has base power and toughness 4-4 four, four, and gains indestructible. Fuck. 
Yeah. Oh my God, Tara. Tara, Tara, Tara. A 3-3 three, three for three, good. Gives us devotion to white, good. Has vigilance, whatever. Wow. And if I'm like playing a white weenie thing, oh my God. For any of you who don't know how this works, if I have a 1-1, one, one, like a hunted witness, if I attack with the Hunted Witness and Terranika, then when it, the, the thing triggers, so what happens? Well, my 1-1 one, one receives this target effect. It gets untapped. It becomes a 4-4. Four, four, um, gains indestructible. And then swonks on in. Whoa. Holy crap. So it effectively vigilancizes the other creature and makes it huge, thick, swollen, and tight, which makes me feel very good tonight. Yeah, I think there's some sort of aggro to mid-range white weenie thing. Have to be extraordinarily careful, though, because um, the danger that a lot of white weenie decks do have is they lack resilience to sweepers. They lack resilience to sweepers. So that's, that's the thing. Yeah, also, very nice catch from Doomhammer88. It's base power, 4-4. Four, four. If I have a creature that has two plus one plus one counters on it, with this effect, it becomes base power and toughness 4-4, four, four, and therefore those plus two plus two counters make it a 6-6. Six, six. That's very, very sick. So I'm going to give this a 4 out of 5 in Constructed. It's, it has a ton of power behind it. does have some concerns, uh, just in terms of just being a, you know, it's like a banalish marshal. Like, you can always just kill it. Um, but seems seems time maybe maybe I would give it five out of five seems very very good yeah I mean, I'm, I'm gonna five out of five for constructed thumbs up from day nine transcendent envoy one and a white flying aura spells you cast cost one less to cast no one has ever gotten that excited about a one two even a flyer um, this is very constructed y very con what the fuck this is very limited y because um, of its overall small stat lines. I mean, if you compare Transcendent Envoy to something like a Tithe Taker, which is a 2-1 for two that also has resilience, it dies and becomes a 1-1. Um, and the reason I say this seems limited-y is that it helps with your aura spells. Auras perform much better in Limited than in Constructed, where you can just nuke things. And it's an enchantment creature. Hooray, constellations. Boink. Oh! Oh! Five out of five for the art. Look at that art. Look, what is this thing, man? Oh my god. And it's like some sort of weird crab demon. That's amazing. Wow. Triumphant Surge. Three and a white. Destroy target creature with power four or greater. You gain three life. Um, I would describe this as a perfectly acceptable limited card. Three out of five. You wouldn't want like to main deck four of them, but main decking one of them is, I think, going to be a universally comfortable decision in limited. You're always fine to have one of these in there. Um, Constructed, not even remotely. Why would you run a destroy effect when you have some exile prison effects using enchantments? The gain three life is like, you know, shrugful. It's fine. It's fine either way. Oh my god. We made it to blue. All right, let's stretch. Ugh, okay, all right, look. We just reviewed all the white cards. Ugh, oh, we haven't even reviewed any of the multicolored cards that contain white. Oh, yeah. Oh. How enlightened do you feel on a scale of one to five? Hmm. Do you feel like you know the truth to running all those white cards? Hmm. I don't know what that neck angle was that I did before. <laughs> uh, you're, a lot of people are saying zero out of five. That's great. You, you rate me the exact way I rate cards. Mm, perfect. Uh, I'm going to reward myself with one piece of chicken. I'm going to mute. This is my lunch.
I don't know if I made it better or worse when I muted. I don't know. But let's talk about blue. Let's talk about blue, baby. <clears throat> Illyrios Enraptured. Two and a blue, a legendary creature human. Illyrios Enraptured enters the battlefield tap rude. Illyrios doesn't untap during your untap step if you control a reflection. When Illyrios enters the battlefield, create a 3-2 blue reflection creature token. Oh, this card is an extremely strong limited card. An extremely strong limited card. Honestly, a 3-2 three, for 3 is... <clears throat> a 3-2 three, for, uh, for 3 shows up a lot, and you wind up, you know, just filling... Uh, filling out, you know, your 23rd card in your draft deck with something like a 3-2 for 3. This is both a 3-2 for 3 as well as a 2-3 for free. This is the kind of thing that you're, you're just sort of fine having in a... Or excuse me, this is sort of thing that you're delighted to have in a limited deck because you can just start attacking with a 3-2 and then when it dies, now you have a 2-3. I mean, it's just good old-fashioned value. It's just good old-fashioned value, man. It's great. Um, in Constructed, this is slow as hell. So 0 out of 5 Constructed, I'd give this a 5 out of 5 in Limited. I mean, this is this is fantastic. This is just fan-freaking-tastic. Pen of Aries says, it's the same stats as Lovestruck Beast for the same cost. Uh, for just the Beast side, yeah. For just the Beast side. I mean, I think, it's, I think it's fantastic. I think it's fantastic. Zero out of five for Constructed. No, it isn't. Uh, two, three plus three twos should be five, five. So it does have the same stats as the Lovestruck Beast for three. The Beast side, that is. Ah. Ashiox Erasure. Oh, I love this card. I love this card! Two! And a pair of blues. An enchantment with flash. When Ashiok's Erasure enters the battlefield, exile target spell. Your opponent can't cast spells with the same name as the exiled card. Oh. When Ashiok's Erasure leaves the battlefield, return the exiled card to its owner's hand. Okay, the downside is quite down. You just undo everything you did. But, dude, bro... My friend, listen. Holy crap. It says exile target spell. That means something on the stack. This is the exploration that Wizards has done in the last few years of different ways to target things on the stack instead of countering. Because that's the way countering works. You cast a spell, it's now floating in the air, so I cast a counter spell. <laughs> counter the thing and then it's gone. You have something like Aether Gust. I cast a spell, and the spell says I can't be countered, but you can be targeted with Aether Gust and put on top of the library or put on the bottom of the library. Um, Ashiok's Erasure is very exciting for things like, dang, Ang 8011 took the words right out of my mouth, man. You can counter style with this when your opponent plays a Fires of Invention. You use Ashiok's Erasure to target the Fires of Invention, and now it can't be cast. God, so sick. So it's kind of an interesting combination between Ixalan's Binding and a Counterspell. And Ixalan's Binding was a very, very strong, desirable card. So I think that Ashiok's Erasure is undoubtedly a 5 out of 5 card in Constructed. Absolutely 5 out of 5. Um, what do I think about it in Limited? This looks a little bit more like a 2 out of 5 in Limited due to the fact that um, many limited decks do not have repeat cards, so this is kind of like a four-mana counterspell. But Ashiok's Erasure. <sighs> and again, I'm basing this statement upon the fact that Ixalan's Binding, very similar to this card, and was a four-mana white card. God, it was so good. So good. Brine Giant. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Look at that fabulous Brine Giant. Six and a blue. 
It's a 5-6. It says this spell costs one less to cast for each enchantment you control. This is a fine little limited beater. Uh, a 5-6 is a very nice stat line. It's built upon extra enchantments being on the battlefield. Uh, it's common. Seems very, very solid and limited. I'd give it like a probably 3 out of 5, 4 out of 5 and limited. If there's like two enchantments out, this is a 5 mana, 5-6, five, which is solid. Um, it's also just like it's just a giant, you know. It's just it's just large stats. So I mean, this is this is pretty good. Um, I would never make it a five out of five because it's just you know it's just a big vanilla boy, you know. Um, there there's things that like uh, there's green creatures that are like a seven seven for six consistently, and it's just like yeah, it's fine. So I I would honestly give it a three out of five. I'd, I'd give it a three out of five. It's, it's fine. How the heck do you say that? This isn't Calaf. Calaf. Probably Calafi. Beloved of the sea. One in a pair of blue. Calafi's power is equal to your devotion to blue. Creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponent casts that target this permanent. Cost one more to cast. I'm going to say it's Calafi because it reminds me of the name Calliope, which just ends in a P-E. Okay, so creatures and enchantments you control have spells your opponents cast. Target this enchantment costs one more to cast. So at the very least, it's a two, three, four, three which is fine and uh, limited. If you have one creature out, it becomes a 3-3 three, three for 3. 3 toughness not going up means it it's never going to be an oppressive creature on the board for your opponent to just block and limited. Constructed, I can see there being some merit to in maybe a mono blue aggro deck buffing some targets. I really struggle to see how this would work in Constructed, but maybe two out of five in Constructed. I can see some ideas brewing. The reason I'm saying two out of five is that when you were able to get like some hexproof merfolk or you were able to get uh, some hexproof or some um, what the heck is the blue enchantment? Wow! My brain doesn't remember old card names. What was the one mana blue? Curious Obsession. Farts! Curious Obsession plus some dive downs, things like this, were incredibly annoying to deal with. Just some cheap blue creatures pecking away at you. And what you might view this as saying when things cost one more is slow your opponent down a turn. Things like that really, really add up when you have a very grindy blue deck. So I think that Calafi is, it has enough merit that I would want to explore something with it. I'd want to explore something with it. Lakova says goes well with Spell Pierce. Yeah, Spell Pierce with that card rotating out, this kind of has some of the Spell Piercey feels to it. You know what I mean? It's nice. Chain to Memory. Not to be confused with Chain to Mammary. It's one blue. Target creature gets minus four, minus O until end of turn, scry two. No, 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 no. A big no. No out of ten. Nopey, wopey, dopey. Um, I'm going to give this a zero out of five in limited, a zero out of five in constructed. No one has ever gotten excited to yeet a card straight to the graveyard for the sake of just going, oh, I didn't do anything. This is exactly the way that the guy looks in Friday Night Magic when he runs Chain to Memory. It's his last card in his hand, and he's like, why the fuck did I main deck this? Like, that's really why you don't want to run this guy. Scry 2, you already have the witch, the Wishing Well. The wi the, the Witching wishy, wishy Washy Well? The Swell Well? I don't, I don't remember what the name of it is. But it, it's a one blue, you play it and you Scry 2, and later you can crack it to draw 2. And that is primo niceo. So I'd give it a 0 out of 5 in Limited. I'd give it a 0 out of 5 in Constructed. It's our first double O. <laughs> Deny the Divine. God isn't real. Ah! 
Deny the divine, two and a blue, instant counter target creature or enchantment spell. If that spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. Limited, it's fine, constructed. Why would I want to run a three mana counter spell unless, well, no, no, I'm full of shit. Let me explain. There consistently has always been a spot for a three mana counter spell with upside. Absorb, counter it, and heal. Ionize, counter it, and zap. This is counter less than everything and exile it. Um, so I, I'd still give it like a one out of five in constructed. The difference between a two mana counter spell versus a three mana counter spell is substantial. Substantial. Uh, but I think this is just like a fine card to run one of in limited. So I'd give it like a one out of five in constructed. 2 out of 5 in limited, 3 out of 5 in limited, probably 2, I'd probably say 2. Eidolon of Philosophy. We're going to eat ourselves some chicken. Okay, this one is very interesting. In limited, I would actually give this a relatively strong rating. I would give this like a 3 out of 5. Edging on 4 out of 5. This is based upon my statements that limited tends to get a little more clogged up. We've already seen there are escape cards peppered around. We've already seen some relatively not aggressive stat lines. Like We have not really seen anything deal 4 damage. Today, I mean, I know we've only done white, but um, I guess the giant is one case. It's very likely that Eidolon of Philosophy can be a blocker and an emergency blocker, adds to devotion, and we can sack for seven to draw three. I think that'll come up more often than one might think. Um, and it's an enchantment creature. I mean, it's doing a lot of small stuff. It's a one, two for one. Adds a Devotion, procs Constellation Enchantment things. This is honestly the sort of card you'd see in your opening hand and not play until you have another Constellation creature out. So I'd actually give this a 4 out of 5 in Limited. Um, I'd give it a 4 out of 5 in Limited. Constructed, 0 out of 5. Yeah, yeah, Danan agrees with himself. He loves the power trip. Oh my god, yes. Being judgmental, have you ever gotten a rush faster than being judgmental about something? Yes. Elite Instructor, two and a blue, a human wizard. When Elite Instructor enters the battlefield, draw a card, then discard a card, and it's a 2-2. Two, two. Eh. V super garbage constructed. No blue player runs creatures. <laughs> no blue player is going to get um, out of bed in the morning to play a 2-2 two, two for three. Drawing a card, discarding a card, two out of five. It has merit in limited when I have drawn too many lands and I want to draw something and then chuck the land. Um, but, I mean, I'm not even that hyped to run it in, in Limited either, so that's a big old bad one. Glimpse of Freedom. One in a blue, instant. Draw a card. Escape. Draw another card. So this is shitty jumpstart. Zero out of five. Constructed, zero out of five. Limited? What's what's what what's the name of the damn card? What's the name of the radical idea? Wow, my my card naming memory is so bad that I'm gonna eat this spinach. I don't like how expensive it is just to draw two radical ideas. Substantially better in constructed. Um, I guess this does have an advantage over radical idea in that you don't have to discard anything in your hand, but it, it's tough for me to think of why I would want to run this when I could literally run a divination, which is three mana, draw two. So, eh. 
eh, 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 eh. Not excited about it. You might accidentally have it in a limited deck, so, huh? Ichthyomorphosis. Two and a, and a blue. Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature loses all abilities and is a blue fish with base power and toughness. O one. one Very solid card. It's blue removal. Yeah, solid. Great, limited little thing. <laughs> Take this as military career was a flop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah ichthyomorphosis is it's just kind of the same as you would view something like a um, any of the white binding things target creature can't attack or block it's kind of like that so it just feels fine it's not, not a not a at all constructed card because in constructed you would just go this is three mana this should just be a counter spell and you'd be right Kiora bests the Sea God. Whoa! Seven mana saga. Number one, create an 8-8 blue Kraken creature token with hexproof. Oh! Chapter two, tap all non-land permanents, target opponent controls. They don't untap during their controller's next untap step. Chapter three, gain control of target permanent and opponent controls. Untap it. This is the awesomest card limited has ever seen. This is so freaking awesome. So, quick question. I want to know the answer to this. If you Can you flicker this once it hits chapter three? I don't think so. Because I think that the effect, gain control of target permanent opponent controls, goes on to the stack as the thing dies. So I think you cannot flicker it. But you can flicker number one and number two. I, do, I don't, I, I feel like you cannot, because I thought that what happens is it's at two. It gets sacrificed when the last chapter leaves the stack. Ah. Fuck. Let's see, Fenerva Aries says, if the number of lore counters on a saga permanent is greater than or equal to its final chapter number and it isn't the source of a, and it isn't the source of a chapter ability that has triggered but not yet left the stack that saga's controller sacrifices it the state based action doesn't use the stack okay so so what so what that means is that when the the saga effect is on the stack when it leaves the stack then you sacrifice the saga so you actually could flicker it then regardless this is one of the most insane limited cards i've ever seen ever i mean this is obscene this is gross this is actually legitimately gross in limited in constructed it has some merit. Um, I say some merit because, first of all, it is costed similarly to an Agent of Treachery. In that Agent of Treachery is seven. When it enters the battlefield, you gain control of a permanent. This is seven mana. You wait a few turns, and then you gain control of a permanent. You get some Krakens and some tapping along the way. Hell, I actually have no freaking clue how to evaluate this and construct it. I have zero idea. I'd probably give it like a 2 out of 5 in constructed. I say Kraken. Kraken and Kraken are both acceptable pronunciations of the word, but I just don't like saying Kraken. I prefer Kraken. Can you cheat this into play? I don't know. I... 2CG says, it's a good win condition in control decks, I guess, question mark? Maybe? I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. Maybe you'd want one of these. 
in an Esper control deck, something like this. Um, the thing is, if you're a control deck, number two does not really matter. Chapter two doesn't really matter at all. An 8-8 blue Kraken creature token, okay. Chapter two just doesn't really matter. Um, chapter three does matter. The reason I say chapter two doesn't matter is you're already going to be clear in the board and countering shit, you know what I mean? Hmm. Basically, I'm really struggling to evaluate this in standard because I'm trying to say, how good is an 8-8 Kraken with Hexproof? That's that's the one that I'm like, I don't know how to think about. So I'm going to say a 2 out of 5. 2 out of 5, like, I want to be clear about my rating scale. 0 out of 5 is it's so bad you're never going to see play. 1 out of 5 is like, it's not good. And in cases where it is, it's very fringe. Two is like you could probably do something with this. You, It's not going to define anything. Three is it's like it'll show up. It'll show up because it actually has some versatility and multiple different ideas. Four is like it's a fucking solid card and five is an all-star. So like when I say two, I'm not like trying to put this card down. It's just I, I have a very tough time evaluating this. I mean, in limited, this is the easiest, <laughs> easiest Five out of five ever. In limited, this is one of the best cards I've seen in ages in limited. Fuck, it's so good. In 8-8, eight, eight, you shut your opponent's board down for like two turns. God, that is insane. All right. Metawise, Prophecy, one in the blue. What an interesting saga. A, a four chapter saga. Chapter one is Scry 2. Cool. Chapter two, choose a card name. Done. Chapter 3, when you cast a spell with the chosen name for the first time this turn, draw two cards. Chapter 4, look at the top card of each player's library. This is one of the... What the fuck is this card? Um, limited, limited, this is, again, trivially easy, I think, to just say it's a 5. It's just trivially easy to say it's a 5. Because um, you're getting to pay two to essentially guarantee that you're going to draw two a little bit later. Scry two is a perfectly nice effect. So just just chapters one, two, and three um, are enough to make me say this is a limited five. Because limited tends to be a little slower. It's not like you're ever going to have the case where you choose a card name in Limited and then are very timid to cast it the next turn. Most of Limited is creatures. You're going to have somewhere between 14 and 18 creatures in your typical uh, Limited deck. You just name one of the creatures that you were going to play and then you fucking play it, you know. Um, so it, it feels to me like a two-mana scry two, wait a second, and then draw two. So, I mean, I would give this five out of five. Um Look at the top card of each player's library. I don't know how to evaluate that. That's weird. Constructed, though. I don't even know, man. I don't even know. All right. Spinach. This feels bad and constructed. I want to say 0 out of 5 in constructed. I want to say we'll never, ever, ever see it get played, ever. Not even remotely. Yeah, I want to say we're never going to see this get cast in constructed. Because, like, most of the time, if I'm blue, what am I doing with blue? I am at end of turn doing what I think is best. Either waiting to cast a counterspell, or if you don't, then I'll draw some cards. So you don't really get the opportunity to choose a card and guarantee you're going to cast it following following up. So so I think it's a 0 out of 5 then. There's going to be enough enchantment removal things happening there that... No, 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 no. This art! This art! Oh my god. Limited. It is an expensive counterspell with Scry. I give it a 3 out of 5. It's fine to have some counterspells in Constructed. It's fine to have some... Or it's, fuck me, I keep saying construct when I mean limited. There's a 3 out of 5 in limited. It's fine to have some counter spells in limited. Even though that this one's a little expensive. Uh, scry 2. Um, 
is nice. We, we, we traditionally see a lot of uh, four mana counter spells in limited, like one of them being in your deck, something like that. Uh, in constructed, though, no, no. In constructed, this scry to effect is is not especially useful because if you are a blue deck that is running counter spells, you then also are going to be running instant speed card draw. So the card draw is what you're going to be focusing on. Adding an extra mana cost, meaning that you can't use this on turn three, is not worth the opportunity cost gain from being able to scry two, not even. Après moi le, le déluge. It says, what's the past tense of scry? It's scryed. Um, but I really feel like there's some way for me to make a joke with the word scrotum in there, and I don't have it yet. I just know the end point. That's it. Nadir Kraken, one and a double blue, a two, three. Ooh, it's a little baby Kraken. Look at how huge this Kraken is. And look at how not huge its stat line is. Whenever you draw a card, you may pay one. If you do, put a plus one, plus one counter on Nadir Kraken and create a one, one blue tentacle creature token. Never mind, this card is fucking awesome. This is an absolute animal unlimited. Jesus, I'd give it like four out of five. Four out of five? Five out of five? Probably five out of five. It's a five out of five because all by itself it can win the game. This is a limited beater. It's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And it's whenever you draw a card. Not whenever you draw an additional card this turn. And who doesn't love being swarmed with tentacles, right? That's something that our generation, the millennials, love. We're into tentacles and talking about them. We're not busy making music videos on TikTok. We're still just hearing the word tentacle and looking at each other and going, I thought it. Ah, wonderful. Let's just move on to Nyad of Hidden Coves. Two and a blue. An enchantment creature, Nymph. As long as it's not your turn, spells you cast cost one less to cast. That's an interesting one. That's an interesting one. Um, immediately what makes me go, ah, is that it's reducing the cost of our spells, but it's a three mana card. So it makes me be like, why? You know what I mean? It makes me be like, why? It's gross and Simic Flash. I, I, I'm not sure I'd want it in Simic Flash. I'm not sure I'd want it in Simic Flash. And here, here's my reasoning for that. Here's my reasoning for that. How does Simic Flash typically play? They... Each turn that I do one thing, the Simic Flash player counters that one thing. And then on a turn where I can't do one thing, my opponent, or I, I the Simic Flash player, I play a big scary threat like a Brian Bourne Cutthroat or a uh, Nightpack Ambusher. So if I get to turn three and I play Nyad, I immediately can't stop and play reactive anymore. If I w were able to get this down, what would this let me do? It would let me, like, play two things. Flash decks typically are not looking to dump cards at a faster rate. They're, they're typically looking to just deny a thing, deny a thing, play a thing during a window of opportunity. Deny a thing, deny a thing. Being able to play multiple cards faster is not really a struggle that the Simic Flash deck has. And so, so for this reason, I think that this is what I would just call um, a limited filler. This is a card that you're fine having in. Um, Yellow Cobus, if this had flash, what do I think about that? Probably still wouldn't run it in flash because I'd want something that's either a denial card, like a counter, or a big threat that grows, like a Nightpack Ambusher or a Brineborn. Um, <laughs> Shonda says sub to say thanks for muting during eating that chicken. That shit bothers the fuck out of me. You and my business partner, my friend. 
anytime I like chew, he's like, mute it, mute, mute it right away. And now I'm just trained. I just like get ready to hop and I just hit the mute button and then I swallow and boop, hit it. So, this is what is like limited deck filler. You're not disappointed to have a two, three for three in there. It's a fine amount. Um, infrequently, you'll get to use the one less casting cost and then there you go. Nyx born Seaguard, two and two blue for a two five with nothing else. It's an enchantment creature though, bling. Merfolk soldier, ah. This is just pack filler. This is fine. This is all right. This is eh. This is never gonna see the light of day in Constructed. Zero out of five. What do we think of limited? Pack filler out of five. This is fine. This is a fine card. I'd give it a two out of five. It's, you, just, you're, you, you just see it and you're like, eh. It's like your 13th pick when no one else is getting glue. Uh, excuse me, no one else is getting blue. Or glue. If no one's getting glue <laughs> at your draft table, then that's good because it's bad to play card games with gluey fingers. But also if no one's blue, you know, you can get it. So it's, I, I'd give it a big old two. Omen of the Sea. One and a blue. Flash. When Omen of the Sea enters the battlefield, scry two. Then draw a card. Ooh. Sacrifice Omen of the Sea, Scry 2. It's actually not bad. Um, I don't play enough blue to know how to evaluate scry. Here's the thing, opt is one blue that says scry one and then draw a card. This is scry two and draw a card. It's a flash, so it can still be cast at instant speed. You can also blow some extra mana to scry later. So, I mean, I think that it may, mm, 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 uh, uh, uh. one of the interesting things is that this is an enchantment, so it does contribute to your devotion. I'd probably give it a 2 out of 5 in Constructed. Like, I'm not over the moon about Opt as a card anyways. So this is, eh. In Limited, I guess I'd say... 3 out of 5. Edging, I think... Okay, here, here's how I'm actually going to evaluate this. I'm going to say, I think this is a 4 out of 5 in Limited, but it's very, very subtle. Like, very subtle. Like, I, I, I had this discussion a while back that um, there's a lot of really subtle, not flashy things that good players will become attuned to. Like, if I'm playing StarCraft, and, you know, in StarCraft, you start with 12 workers. If you had one player start with 13 workers, immediately all good players would be like, that's broken. That player has such a huge advantage. Because he has 13 workers. Are you kidding me? That's like so busted good. All things being equal, a worker mines 40 minerals a minute. So 10 minutes later, that worker is just going to give you a free nexus. You know? Things like that where you're just like, whoa. Like, oh yeah, it's totally, but it's totally unfair. Um, this, this seems like it's going to do that same sort of thing in Limited where it's gonna let you scry and then draw and it's gonna to contribute to devotion and the limited format looks slow and then you can sack it later and you can scry. I think it's going to be powerful and limited. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say four out of five for this one. Although, what people tend to do, boy, let me, let me say something that's gonna be so true it'll, it'll hurt a little bit. As far as I can tell, people typically believe things more when they feel good rather than when some rational process said this is true. You know what I mean? Like, if you slam some huge spell and it blows a bunch of shit up, you're just like, this card's awesome! And if there's something that, like, you know, subtly sets you up into a situation where you happen to have the thing that someone would go, oh, I fucking asshole top decked and not think about this card. Like, this is the sort of thing that slips under all radars, but I, I actually think this is an extremely powerful card. I think... 
but I'm not sure because I'm not a good magic player. I'm just an above average magic player. One with the stars, three in a blue. Enchant creature or perm or enchant creature or enchantment. I'm I'm so used to saying creature or <laughs> so used to saying or permanent or whatever that enchant creature or enchantment is like not something my mouth is used to. Enchanted permanent is an enchantment and loses all other card types. still has its abilities, but it's no longer a creature. Okay. Okay, so so it, it's important to understand what this text does. If you have like a vanilla 5-6, you turn it into an enchantment. Now it's an enchantment. So it can't attack anymore. It's basically like remove it from combat. Now if you had a creature like Banalish Marshall that said, give every single other creature plus one, plus one. If you cast one with the stars on that, that's now an enchantment. It can't attack, but um, fuck. yeah, the 3-3 three, three is now an, an enchantment, but the plus one, plus one is still applying across everything. What I'm trying to process is why does it say enchant creature or enchantment? Enchanted enchantment is an enchantment and loses all other card types. Um, this appears to just be a really specific targeting way to make the gods not be able to be turned into creatures. Or there's probably some other... situations in which there is an enchantment creature that maybe I don't fucking know I can't think of any other use outside the god but like for instance um, if there was a creature that did a negative effect to you if someone won with the stars it, it would no longer be a creature and couldn't attack but it would still negatively affect you I'm trying to... Rematch says, if it said enchant creature instead of enchant creature or enchantment, then it would fall off once it made that thing no longer a creature. Is that true? I don't give a shit. This card is a strong limited card. It's a not strong constructed card. Boom! I don't have to figure it out anymore. Yes! Take the problem and put it down and don't look it in the eyes anymore. That's how progress is made. Protean Thauma Thaumaturge. One in a blue. Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may have Protean Thaumaturge become a copy of another target creature, except it has this ability. <gasps> That's a very very powerful limited card. I would give it a, um, a 5 out of 5 in limited. Maybe 4 out of 5 in limited. Um, so if I have Protean Thaumaturge become a copy of another target creature, if that creature is legendary, this doesn't say but this creature is not legendary. So I believe that if you create a copy of it, you have the legend rule apply immediately. So you can only get one. If there is an extremely strong creature, though, that you play, the Protean Thaumaturge immediately becomes that strong creature. So this, this is just an absolutely insane good card. I mean, if you play a super awesome thing like a Cavalier, it just immediately becomes that. 
if you play the Protean Thaumaturge on turn two, and then on turn three, you play a Risen Reef. And then you play another enchantment. Oh, wait, never mind. I got, I'm, I'm fucking up. Because whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield, okay. Has to be enchantment. You can copy opposing creatures. That's interesting. Yeah. So I'll give this a four out of five because um, it can obviously make two big scary dudes. Yeah, so I'd give this four out of five in limited. I'd give it like two out of five in construction. I, I can see some some juice. I can see some really cool juice going on. Its struggle is that it is a one one for two. It can just die to things super easily. Um, yeah. Oh my God! Look at this turtle, Riptide turtle, one in a blue, Flash Defender zero five. Also exactly the rating I would give this for constructed. Four limited. I have a question. Is this an enchantment creature? No, it's not. Okay. Um, for constructed, zero out of five. Four limited. I guess I would give this little turtle boy something like a two out of five. Maybe even a three out of five. Historically, these sort of thick walls, I mean, five is a very, very difficult amount of toughness to get by. Maybe even give this a four. I have so many times built decks with blue in them where I have a two drop defender and it fixes so many problems for me. So I really like this Riptide Turtle a lot. I, I'd probably settle with a three out of five. Uh, in limited because obviously this is not a game ender. This is not <laughs> this is not gonna be something that really shakes your opponent's bones. But it's a fine it's a turtle and I, I tend to think turtles are, are good cards. And good creatures. I like turtles. I like turtles. Sage of Mysteries. Oh my god at the other end of this illustration is a boyfriend going yeah, no, I'm happy to take another one. I love you, sweetheart. Oh, yes. What Instagram husband had to snap this as the 70th photo that day? But it's the golden hour. We only have another 40 minutes to go. Sage of mysteries. Let me tell you something. This girl, this girl is 15 minutes outside of her one-bedroom apartment at a place, at a hiking trail. She's never going to walk up. She's just snapping that photo smashing it straight onto the internet, adding a little bit of constellation filter to the edges. <sighs> Boy, that is an evocative-ass photo, man. Sage of Mysteries, one blue. Human Wizard, Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, target player puts the top two cards of their library into their graveyard. Zero out of five in Constructed, zero out of five in Limited. Who's happy about an O2, one blue, Hopefully, eventually, mill you. No. <sighs> mill is bad. Let me be honest. After trying to do some limited and Throne of Eldrain and having everybody do nothing but play those merfolk fuck men, God, God, getting milled out and limited sucks so bad. God. See God's scorn. Four and two blue. Return up to three target creatures and or enchantments to their owner's hand. Okay. This is the type of card that running like one of as a finisher is nice. It's actually very nice. It reminds me a lot of Cosmotronic Wave, right? Th there's this whole classification of cards that are like finishery things, which is like the board's clogged. What do I do? Getting another 3-4 four for 4 is not going to change that. But if you have um, Cyclonic Rift or Cyclonic Rift or Cosmotronic Wave, any of these things that like make things unblockable, uh, there's other ones like, like Trumpet Blast. Trumpet Blast is a big, big fan. I'm a big fan of. So th this is weird. I would describe this as like a 2 out of 5. A 2 out of 5, maybe a 3 out of 5 in Limited. Because you're never excited to pick this as your first card, but you're never unhappy to get this as one of your later picks because you're like, okay, cool, I'll include this as a way to win. So um, 
I, yeah, I, I like this in, in limited. In constructed, if this is ever in any of your decks, you're permanently banned from this channel. Do you understand me? This is a zero out of five. We don't run these kinds of cards. We don't go like, and then I flood you and send you back home. Not a chance. Shimmerwing Chimera. Shimmerwing Chimera, three and a blue, flying three, two. At the beginning of your upkeep, return up to one other target enchantment you control to its owner's hand. Holy fucking fuck. Fuck. Jesus. This is a five. This is a five. This is a five. This, this, this is a five. Let's talk about it. Ugh. Let's talk about it. Ugh. Without this sentence, this is still like a four. A 3-2 for 4 that flies is a particularly nice stat line. You'll notice I was a little cooler on the 2-3 flyer for 4 because flyers can often just win the game because evasion is good. Um, in limited, in limited, in limited. Um, doing 3 damage a turn is so much faster than doing 2 damage a turn. And often, if you have a flyer, it's good at attacking and it's garbage at blocking because it has something like two toughness. So being able to have it lean a little bit more on the uh, power side to deal more damage is very, very strong uh, for, for just speeding the game up. So I really like Shimmerwing Chimera as a 4-mana 3-2 flyer. Now, the reason... Oh, and let's not forget, it is an enchantment creature and therefore prox constellations. At the beginning of your upkeep, return up to one other target enchantment you control to its owner's hand. Okay. There are a lot of um, sagas that right before they pop, you can just bounce it right back to the hand, send it on back. If you have an enchantment creature that has an enter the battlefield effect. You can return it back to your hand and play it again. If you have an enchantment with some activated ability, like that white one we saw that was pay to exile the creature that this is attached to, the exile effect goes on the stack and you can return this one. There's a lot of very interesting and compelling combinations for this. And th by the way, this is the difference between a niche combo and a broad combo. This procs sagas, creatures that are enchantments, and regular old enchantments, right? It, it does all sorts of things, and there's lots of those in this set. Whereas if there was something much narrower, um, think of some, some uh, constructed things, you know, like your flash creatures cost one less. There's not a lot of flash creatures out there, you know, something like this. So, shit, so good. This is great. This is a great card. Uh, what do I think about this in constructed? I, I'd, I'd actually, I'd, I'd love to tell you that I'm going to give it a zero out of five. I can't even imagine this being useful in constructed due to the fact that things die so often in constructed. So you want sticky things, things that really give a big punch, things that two for one, not things that gradually accumulate value over time. Excuse me. By the way, it also says return up to one other target enchantment you control to its owner's hand. So you can return zero. I was a lost boy squirrel. So has been watching for two years and it's the first time I can text here. Hey, welcome to the party. Is this not a glorious, wonderful, charming, positive, civilized chat? It's not like when you go to Forzen's stream where it's a torture chamber starring Forzen and everyone who's in chat has a little knife and they're just sticking it between the bars of the cage and they're like, ah. Oh my god, it's so good here. Shoal Kraken, four and a blue. Constellation, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, you may draw a card if you do discard a card. Mediocre. Three five for five is what this is. As an upside in limited, you can avoid getting flooded out sometimes god this is so sick this is so good um in constructed 
constellation is not even really that much of a constructed keyword as far as I can tell. Um, playing a thing and then a little while later having another thing comes down it just doesn't happen that often in your good old, good old constructed. Boop. Sleep of the dead. Oh, that's me after I went to the spa and went into the sauna and then got into the 40 degree water. That's four degrees centigrade for all of you people that live in the world. It's pretty much just, just we Americans that like our Fahrenheit. Oh my God, I did the sauna and then I did the cold pool and then I did the hot tub, then I did the cold pool, then I did a dry sauna, then I did the cold pool, then I did the sauna, then I took a shower and I left. And I was so relaxed. My brain was oozing out of all of my face holes. Oh, it felt so good. Sleep of the dead. For one blue. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. This is pretty solid. It's a sorcery, which blows, but it's also one blue. It's also one blue. Um, so I, I, I can see this having some merit in limited, maybe a two out of five in limited. Uh, in constructed, no zero out of five. Absolutely not. No, not a million years. No, 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 no. Oh, the, I actually have a question. Um, ne never mind. I think I think I'm reading it correctly. I think when you escape the card, it is cast at the exact same speed as the card itself because it says you may cast this card from your graveyard for its escape cost so that's describing a cost but i think it's a sorcery in your graveyard it's a sorcery in your hand it's a sorcery everywhere so that's yeah starlit mantle one in a blue flash enchant creature you control when starlit mantle enters the battlefield enchanted creature gains hexproof until end of turn and creature plus one plus one whoa this is a pretty reliable kind of uh, aura. Most of the time, again, auras stink intuitively because if I have an aura on a creature and you cast a spell that kills the creature, you have killed the creature and the aura, you have two for one. Yeah! But this is cast flash. It's going to be cast at instant speed. And then, when it enters the battlefield, this thing gets hexproof and it gets plus one, plus one. So it's kind of like a reliable combat trick that's hard to deal with. So sometimes you can you can use it just to protect. It's kind of like a dive down that has a lingering benefit. Um, so I, I think this is actually pretty acceptable. I would give this like three, four out of five in uh, constructed. Fuck, three, four out of five in limited. In constructed, I don't know. In constructed, I don't know at all. This is uh, the difference between one and two mana is pretty substantial for some of these like mono blue aggro decks. Um, I, my, my intuition tells me that Dive Down being one mana versus Starlet Mantle being two mana makes Starlet Mantle like a one or a two out of five in Constructed. I'd probably say one out of five in Constructed. The reason it's so different is imagine you play a one mana card and you're mono blue and you have a Dive Down, which is a one blue give a creature hex, blue, hex proof. For every turn thereafter, you can on turn two, you can play a one mana thing and leave the one mana open. On the next turn, you can play two mana of creatures and have the one mana open. On the next turn, you can play three mana of creatures and have the one mana open. If you have Starlet Mantle, on turn two, you can't cast anything because you need to save the Starlet Mantle. On turn three, you can spend one mana of creatures and you leave two open for this. So this just like... So I think that I think it's probably one out of five in Constructed. Stern Dismissal. One blue. Return target creature or enchantment and opponent controls to its owner's hand. Oh, so it's a bounce. It's a cute card. We have seen um, blue decks run one or two of these in Constructed. So I'd give it like a one out of five in Constructed. It's overall a weak card. In Limited, one out of two. It's not. I, 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 uh, did I say one out of two? Boy, I suck at talking today. I'm overall a great speaker. I'm a compelling, talky person. But sometimes my words just go away and they just don't work with me. And all of a sudden I start saying one out of two and constructed. I mean limited. I mean, oh my God, one out of five. 
Um, yeah, I don't know. I'd give I'd give this like a one out of five. That's what I'd give it. I'd give it a one out of five in constructed. I give it one out of five in limited. Can't see a reason. Can't really find many because it, generally speaking, this sucks. Like like return a thing to the hand effects are not good unless you can take advantage of it right now. For instance, if my opponent has one big creature and I have three small creatures, if I return that to the hand now, I can attack and win. That's how unsummoned bounce effect type things are strong. Format seems slow. I guess, I guess, as Drenzen says, it can be used to return something that you've stolen back to my hand so that I can recast it. Um, but let's also note that it's return target creature enchantment and opponent controls to its owner's hand. So I, I can't use like unsummon and bounce my own dude or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I'd give it a 1 out of 5 across the board. Stinging Lionfish, the enchantment creature fish for 2 mana. That's a 2-1. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, you may tap or untap target non-land permanent. What? Eh... So if we are thinking, what is this like in Limited? Most of the time, my deck in Limited is a bunch of creatures. Um, there's probably enough flash that this could be good. Maybe this is a useful aggro card in Limited. So I'm going to give this a 3 out of 5 in um, Limited. A 2-1 two, for 2 with some upside. Historically, has been completely fine. Um, what do I think about this in Constructed? I have no clue. I think this is my first question mark out of five. I mean, intuitively, I'd say this is a zero. Intuitively, I'd say this is a super duper duper ultra zero. Um, here, here's, here's why I would say that this is a zero What's the obvious place that this could live? What about in a flash deck, day nine? What about that? Well, a lot of flash decks get a creature down and then they counter stuff in order to kill. Um, the mystics, your generic counter spells, ionize, things like this. Um, maybe bounce for tempo. And if I'm bouncing things with a Brazen Borrower, I'm countering things with counter spells. what is there to tap? You know what I mean? What is there to tap? It's also whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn. So this is only going to be useful to tap one thing of theirs per turn. So... If we let one creature down, counter everything else, and keep tapping with this, and hope that our opponent does cast something that we can counter, so that then we can keep swinging in. Um, so I, it's hard for me to see a lot of the aggro implications. So if we consider the defensive implications, like... I tap or untap one of my permanents. God, I can't figure... I can't... I don't see a combo. I think the only place Stinging Lionfish makes a modicum of sense is if there's something that taps to do a good permanent boost and then I can forcibly untap it and also have a spell that I'm casting during their turn 
zero out of five in constructive. I think this it doesn't make a lick of sense in flash decks. Um, so maybe some other combo. Zero out of five. Zero out of five in constructive. Stinging lionfish. Dana, I figured it out. It's a zero out of five. Limited. Three out of five, I think. Sweet oblivion. Oh, that which we all quietly crave. One in a blue, target player puts the top four cards of their library into their graveyard. Escape for three in a blue and four exile. <sighs> if you run this card against me, you're banned, okay? That's the answer. Careful, I'm warning you. I am warning you out of five. Um, you know what? I'm gonna eat another chunk of chicken. It is a 12 ounce chicken breast. And I'm through about 60% of it. We give ourselves one bite every 10 minutes. Delicious. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. When you cast an escape card, does it stay in your graveyard? What? Oopsie fucking doopsie. Oh, my God. Oh. Huh. Huh. Uh. Every other mechanic that I can think of off the top of my head, where you play something from your hand and then it's in the graveyard and you play it from the graveyard, like every single one, says that when you cast it again from the graveyard, let's go ahead and exile it. Like jumpstart, flashback. Um, not no, There's not dredge, not dredge, the uh, salvage, where you like exile the card and you put counters. Wow. That's crazy. Okay, yeah. Scavenge, 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 scavenge. That's the mechanic I'm thinking of. Yeah, there's just like every single thing. Oh, that's so, that's crazy. Okay, I mean, still, I'm not gonna rate that card. I hate mail cards. Fasa Deep Dwelling. Three in a blue. Oh, the legendary enchantment creature. God. A six, five. Indestructible. As long as your devotion to blue is less than five, Thassa isn't a creature. Nice. You can pay for it to tap another creature. Cool. And then the long one. At the beginning of your end step, exile up to one other target creature you control, then return that card to the battlefield under your control. Ah! Imagine this. Imagine some of your Simic ramp decks where you have like a Thassa down and you just play like a Cavalier and just shit just keeps coming down. Imagine that. Oh my god, I exile up to one other target creature you control and return that card to the battlefield under your control. Wow, Agent of Treachery? Risen Reef? Oh my god. Holy shit. All right, that's a five out of five. That's a five out of five. That's good. And the good news is that when you come back, you're untapped, and it's at the end step. So great. That's really, really disgusting. Okay, Thassa's Intervention. X and two blue. Give me one second.
I've done it. More lemon ginger water. Fastest intervention, X and two blue. Choose one, look at the top X cards of your library. Put up to two of them into your hand and the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Counter target spell unless its controller pays twice X. What do I think about this one? Oh, this is a real pickle. Now, if I am looking at limited, I think this is kind of like a fine to find plus card in limited. Because in limited, this is a draw two very specific cards. That's pretty nice. Like, drawing in limited is, is generally pretty good, being able to like look at the top six uh, and just put two in there is, is nice, is nice. Now, counter target spell unless its controller pays twice X. What do I think about that? Uh, uh, I mean, honestly, like as a counter spell, Thassa's intervention is a little bit worse than just a regular old pay three mana counter spell. Um, so the question is, do I like a counter spell that when I don't feel like using it, I can draw two cards? I think that this this honestly reminds me of Quench a lot. Not just because Quench causes your opponent to have to pay stuff, but like, this is the kind of card I can imagine one or two of in a deck. One or two of in a deck. Because it is very true that sometimes you are a like Esper control and Azorius control, and you wind up with a hand with like three or four counter spells in it and it would god wouldn't it be nice if just one of them would let you draw man hot damn um so i th this seems to me like precisely like a one or two of yeah, it reminds me of syncopates as the mad counter yeah like just it it like it is a counter spell and then when you don't want it to be you can draw two and that sounds pretty nice so i would give this a four out of five in constructed four out of five in constructed and probably three out of five in limited Maybe four out of five in limited. Yeah, I think probably four out of five is all around. Because in limited, it's going slow enough that this is really just a draw two with a little bit of extra fixing, which is nice. In limited as a counter, if things are going to shit, you can always counter something and kind of be like, whoo, oh, oh my gosh, oh goodness. Uh, Thassa's intervention does seem like a good replacement for like a quench or something like that. Like one or two in a, in a constructed deck. And feeling very, very happy about it is where my number four is coming from in Constructed. Are you coming or are you going? Hi. Guys, we have a new expert who's here to rate. I'm going to give some scritches. You're not on the power button, are you? That's good. Because sometimes she just turns off my computer. Hey, look. Come on up. Yeah, you don't like that at all. But I have this box, and it's all for you. Do not chew on this. Jesus. This is my compressed air. She's like trying to chew on the nozzle. All right, Thassa's Oracle. Two blue. Good for devotion. One and three. It's a merfolk wizard. When Thassa's Oracle enters the battlefield, look at the top X cards of your library, where X is your devotion to blue. Ooh. Put up to one of them on top of your library, and the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. If X is greater than or equal to the number of cards in your library, you win the game. <laughs> All right, a 1-3 that when I play, it lets me kind of scry is fine. Let's think of it just that way. That is fine. Um, it, it doesn't let you draw. You look at the top X cards put up to one of them on top of your library and the rest on the bottom. So you're not drawing, it's just a, a scry-ish is how I'm gonna think of it. Um, and then occasionally you win the game. I think this is a limited three out of five. I mean, a one three for two in a blue limited, fine. Uh, in constructed, no. No, 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 no.
Absolutely not. This plus Mirror March is prime what the deck material? That's actually a really funny point, man. We play like some Mirror Marches, we Thassa's Oracle, we flip a bunch, and then just like blast through the deck. Yeah, I think that this win condition um, infrequently will show up in limited because, you know, if games are grindy, then, you know, you get there. Constructed, I can see no way in which this is useful, and moving on. Bam! Thirst for meaning. Ah, yes. Our biggest struggle in life. Two and a blue, draw three cards, then discard two cards, unless you discard an enchantment card. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, this is a strong limited card. This is a, I'd say this is a, I'd give this a four in limited because there are a lot of enchantment creatures. So this is basically a draw three, discard one. Um, pretty, pretty reliable. In constructed, I, I don't see a reason to run this. I, I think that it could do good things in constructed, but the fact of the matter is that there's already so many good reliable card draws, you know, like Chemister's Insight uh, that effectively draws you three and ditches a land. Oh, this could be incredibly good in reanimator decks. This could be incredibly good in Phoenix decks. Great points. Yeah, maybe this is like a two out of five in constructed. Maybe this is a two out of five in constructed. Yeah, I can see that. Thrinody Singer. It's me, Thrinody Singer. One in a blue, flash flying one three. When Thrinody Singer enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X minus O until end of turn, where X is your devotion to blue. Solid. Very, very solid limited card. I would give this a 4 out of 5 as a result. Um, it has the potential to kill a creature. It has the potential to... At worst, it feels like this saves a creature. And it's a 1-3 flyer for 2. It is perfectly acceptable to just play on turn 2 as a reasonable blocker and a reasonable pecker. Just pecking your health away. Seems fine. Thrix. This sudden storm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Look, he's just a ripped, haggard old man made of lightning. Three and a pair of blue. It's flash. It's flying. It's a four or five. Spells you cast with converted mana cost five or greater cost one less to cast and can't be countered. This is unbelievable in limited. A 4-5 flyer with flash. Fa. Very good card. What about... So, I mean, limited, 5 out of 5, undeniably. I think that the, the last line of text, the spells with converted mana cost 5 or more, that's rarely going to be relevant in um, limited. Now, in constructed... I am only kind of feeling it in Constructed. Yeah, let me explain myself. It's double blue. It's double blue. So often this is going to be in a deck that is not splashing blue. It has to be solidly in blue. So like a Simic deck, Esper Control, Azorius Control. Things like that. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. If I'm playing Simic, I've rarely struggled because too much of my stuff was being countered. I've, I've really rarely had that happen. And thought to myself, man, if I could flash in a guy and make them uncounterable, that would help. Typically what I do is I just board in Mystic Disputes. You know what I mean? Bored in Mystic Disputes. Um, I, I think that this actually does have some merit just as a 4-5 flyer with flash. I'm I, I'm really trying to zoom in on that spells you cast with converted mana cost 5 or greater cost 1 less cast can't be countered. Yeah, like if I'm blue, I'm not going to try to fix my shit getting countered by playing a Thrix. I'll fix that by running Mystic Disputes. I'll fix that by running the Gates or Disdainful Strokes. 
Not by running disdainful strokes. I wouldn't fix the counter problem because it doesn't really hit any counters. I'd give this a three out of five in constructed, and I'm I'm fairly confident on that evaluation. I mean, this is an absolute limited bomb. In constructed, though, I I, I just see it as a four or five flash flyer, which have have shown up to be pretty good. Um, Jeb and Jay says fires of invention will like this. I'm not convinced Fires of Invention will like this. The reason is the following. When would I like this with Fires of Invention? Oh, well, in theory, if I have my Fires of Invention out, then I would want to make sure my stuff is encountered because that would spoil everything. Well, if you have Fires of Invention out, you cannot cast this at end of turn with Flash. You can't do that. Would you rather run a Thrix or would you rather just run another Cavalier? You know what I mean? You'd have to be cutting something like that. Um, so you don't get to get the flash benefit. So after I've played Thrix, it's kind of weird to think, okay, now it's my turn. I'm going to play Thrix so that the next card I'm going to cast won't get countered. Well, yeah, then your Thrix is going to get countered. There's already Cavalier of Gales, which is a 5-5 flyer that draws. You also have the um, Sphinx of Foresight, which is a 4-4 flyer for 4, so you can cast that on turn 4. Yeah, I don't think this fits in fires. Yeah, I still confidently give it a 3 out of 5 in Constructed. Towering Wave Mystic. One in a blue. Whenever Towering Wave Mystic deals damage, target player puts that many cards from the top of their library into their graveyard. Oh, God, this mill stuff. I mean, this is actually a fine card. This is actually a fine card. It's mill. Boo. It's fine and limited. It's like a 2 out of 5 and limited because it's a 2-1 for 2 and sometimes I just want to run it. Uh, it. There appears to be a good amount of mill shit in here, so maybe this will cause the mill to happen. Could also be used to put your own cards into your graveyard so you can escape or get more escape cards into the bin. Mm, something like that. Uh, you know, you know what I mean? I mean, man. I mean, let's be honest. Let's be honest. This is fine. This is a fine, fine, fine card. Not going to rate it because we don't like Mill for whatever reason today. Triton Wave Rider. Three in a blue. Constellation. Whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, Triton Wave Rider against flying until end of turn. Extremely solid and limited. It's a 3 3 for 4, which is a pretty common stat line that you see, especially in blue. Um. There's enough enchantment creatures that this turns it into a 3-3 with flying, which is very strong. Uh, uh, Inconstructed. No. 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 You, I mean, in Constructed, you could just run a Sphinx of Foresight. And that's a 4-4 flyer for 4. That doesn't even have to get any of this stuff. So I mean there, there's so many cards that are so much better. Vexing Gull. Two and a blue for a flash flyer for two two. Awesome limited card. Love this. Four out of five limited. It's just a solid ass little card. God look at that bird of the day. So cute. Not running constructed, but God look at that bird. He's just so derpy looking. And he's got like bird feet as the pattern on his little feather coat. God he's such he's so adorable. Wave Break Hippocamp. Two and a blue, an enchantment creature horsefish. Whenever you cast your first spell during each opponent's turn, draw a card. This is like a 3 out of 5 in limited, maybe 4 out of 5. Because it just has such ability to draw 3 or 4 cards in limited. Because, you know, if your opponent does not have a removal spell, this immediately can start to, you know, kick it into gear. What do we think about it in constructed? Yikes. I'd actually give this a 0 out of 5 in constructed. I'd actually give it a 0 out of 5 in constructed. Um... Because let's think about the following situation. It's turn three. 
you play a wave break hippocamp. If your opponent cannot kill it this turn, then you untap and you just have a 2 2, and you're hoping that the opponent casts stuff so you can start drawing. A 2 2 on the ground is not going to be a threat. If this was a 2 2 flyer, you could play this on turn three and then be swinging in on the skies and countering and denying. If you're up against a white weenie deck, they might have some two X's and what are you gonna block with your wave break hippocamp? No, you're gonna try not to and so on and so on. Um, so like, like turn three, it seems hard to really get it to do some good stuff without getting killed. Worse, what if we want to wait until turn six so we can play this and have a counter spell up? What if we want to play it on turn five so we have a quench up? Well, if we're playing it on turn five and we have a quench up, if our opponent tries to cast a removal spell on the wave break hippocamp, well, actually, let's first note that we might be struggling to get to turn five if we're relying purely on counter spells, but whatever. Let's assume we get to turn five. If I if I try to quench a removal spell, most removals that kill this are two mana or three mana, and then they'd have enough mana left over to pay the quench cost. What if I wait till turn six? Dude, you're waiting till turn six to play a two-two on the ground for the hope that when the following turn your opponent casts something, you can counter it, you get to draw one card, you know? I mean, fuck, just instead of running Wave Break Hippocamp, run four Chemistry's Insights, you know what I mean? Um, what about in a Flash deck? I think the uh, analysis in a Flash deck would be identical to what I just said. If you play it on turn three, you're giving up the ability to counter something on that particular turn. Yeah. <laughs> Entropy TV says this is a Rube Goldberg payoff. Ooh, I like that description. Whirlwind Denial. Two and a blue. For each spell and ability your opponent's control, counter it unless its controller pays for. This is a really unique and interesting one. Uh, first of all, it can counter Hydroid Crasis because Hydroid Crasis can draw half X cards, gain half X life, so you can counter that, um, I think. The um, the other situation in which this can potentially be relevant is if your opponent has some sort of copy effect. They cast the spell, they cast the copy, then you cast Whirlwind Denial, which forces four payment for each thing that's on the stack. Yeah, it also, it also does get all the shit that's in the Jun Sacrifice stack. It just it just it just counters the stack basically. That's really really interesting. I don't even know how to evaluate that one, but this is fascinating to me. I this is horrific in limited. I think. I mean, I think it is, it is weird. No, I mean this is probably one out of five in there. I think you need to explain this one for more people to understand. Yeah. So like, let's say I um. Let's say that I have something that says um. Let's imagine a, so first of all, let's note it says for each spell and ability your opponent controls. So a spell is something that has been cast but hasn't hit the, the, the battlefield yet. So if I like cast a creature, that spell is floating and I can counter it now. Or let's say I have a creature that when I tap it, it gives all my artifacts plus one, plus one. I tap it, that ability goes on the stack and now I can counter the ability using Whirlwind Denial and it won't happen. Now, what if, what does it mean for each spell? Let's imagine a couple circumstances. The first is Lucky Clover. Let's say I use Brazen Borrower to try to return this thing to the hand. Lucky Clover immediately copies that, and now I can return a second thing to the hand. So now I have these two things on the stack, the Lucky Clover thing and the copied ability. What I can do is I can play Whirlwind Denial, and for the Lucky Clover ability, and for the um, original Return the Brazen Borrower, I counter both unless my opponent pays four. If I play 
a um, Hydroid Crasis. That's a creature which, upon cast, draws half X cards and gains half X life. There's two things on there. I could play Whirlwind Denial, and it eats through both of those. You don't get to draw. You don't get the creature. If I'm up against one of those Jun Sacrifice decks, and the Oven sacrifices a cat to try to create food, and then Corvold wants to get a plus one, plus one, and draw a card, I can counter the whole stack. If my opponent sacrifices a fabled passage to try to get another land, I can whirlwind denial that, and they can't search that. There's there's a uh, anything that happens that goes on the stack, you can just go fuck no, you just we're not going to do it. Huh. That's interesting. So this has to have constructed merit. This has to be like three out of five. Maybe maybe even five out of five in constructed because it just has so much merit. This counters Niv Mizzet. How does it counter Niv Mizzet? I don't believe it counters Niv Mizzet. Not the creature itself, his ability is stacks. Ah, yes, I see what you mean. Yes, that's correct. That's correct. So, um, wow. Can it clear walker triggers? Yes. A, uh, specifically, planes walkers have loyalty abilities, are what they are called. Witness of tomorrow's four and a blue flying three four that you can pay shit to draw one. Constructed zero out of five. It's just a bird. Uh, limited four out of five. It's an enchantment. Gives you a flying three four and you can pay a bunch to burn mana in a late game. Very, very, very strong limited card. Very happy to see it. It's time to do black. We've done the Woo of Wooberg. It's currently 3.55. We've taken about an hour and a half. Uh, probably a little longer than that, an hour and 40 minutes to get through those ones. So we'll see if we wrap by seven from heaven. Agonizing Wamos. Oh, God, this is such a sultry image. Mm. One in a black. Target opponent reveals their hand, choose a non-land card from it, or a card from their graveyard. Exile that card and lose a life. Yeah. 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 Mmm. 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 I like this card a lot. I mean, it's no Thoughtseize, but... Um, important to note, Duress, which is a good card, is one black, and you can only remove a non-land, non-creature card from the hand. So, Agonizing Remorse can get creatures, it can get planes, walkers, it can get spells, so on and so forth. Um, so the fact that this is so targeted is quite nice, and the fact that it exiles is quite nice. And I can see circumstances in which you'd want that graveyard to exile. I don't think this is like a run four of, although we'll probably try. <laughs> um, but this is nice. Oh, is there, is there a kitten? Hello. Yeah. Ah! Um, yeah, Thought Erasure is a blue and a black for delete any old card from the hand, but it puts it into the graveyard and then lets you surveil one, uh, as opposed to this, which exiles it. So this is... You could think of it as a better Thought Erasure, but surveil one is a pretty damn important part of that. So I, I think this is like a four out of five constructed. Um, I don't know how to evaluate this kind of card in limited. Three out of five? Two out of five? Limited? Eh. I mean, it, 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 it just sucks so much to draw this late in limited. It just sucks so much. Like, turn two in limited, it's going to be good, but eh. Ephemia, the cacophony. One in a black. Scrawl! 
Legendary Enchantment Creature Harpy. Flying at the beginning of your end step, you may exile an enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Five in limited. Five in limited. Wow. Whoa. Holy shit. Play a bunch of enchantment creatures, and then when they're dead, turn them into 2-2 two -two zombie creatures. Fuck yeah. It's 2-1 flyer. Fuck yeah. Ephemia, the cacophony. I'm all about her. Yes. In constructed, a 0 out of 5, because it's a measly little 2-1 flyer and you're never going to have that many enchantments and being able to like create two twos one at a time in standard it's just not that strong aspect of lamprey enchanted creature you control when aspect of lamprey enters the battlefield target opponent discards two cards enchanted creature has lifelink um mind rot is two and a black for uh, opponent discards two cards um Giving a creature lifelink, I do not think helps make this feel like a better mind rot. This feels like a slower, worse mind rot, and uh, I would absolutely make out with that all night long, 100%. Blight Breath. Come on. Come on. Catoblopos. It's a Blight Breath Catoblopos. This... How, how do you say that? Catoblopaw. Catoblopas. Catabli pass. This is absolutely a Catoblopas. I'm Sean Plot, and this is my Black Breath Catoblopas. Four and two black. It's a beast creature. Jeez, it's pricey. When Black Breath Catoblopas enters the battlefield, target creature and opponent controls gets minus X, minus X until end of turn, where X is your devotion to black. Excellent in limited. Excellent. Obviously, a six mana three two is big old dog balls in uh, constructed. But this is an especially, especially relevant and nice card when there are indestructible gods and creatures that are big. You just play your your. <laughs> you just you just whip out your. <laughs> it becomes more difficult to say the longer time goes on. The, the blind broth kabob. <laughs> Who? What's the katabobos? What is this? What is the fuck? That is, this has never been in Greek mythology. This has never been a thing. Look, I, I get it. Like, you, you, you have... What is it? Like, Akros is the version of Troy, right? I guess you want to make up your own thing. You're like, we don't have a Minotaur, we have a Catabroplos. I mean, Jarkos is actually from Greek mythology, though. Mm -mm, no, I haven't heard it, and therefore it's never been a thing. Catabroplos? There's a Catabroplos. It's, it's so fucking... That's not a thing. You're all wrong. I've... Oh, yeah, I've... I, it's in Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, yeah. Let's... Let's trust what comes out of Dungeons and Dragons as what is canon for fantasy. Okay, well, if he's mind controlled and I have this like anti mind control food, can I like mash it up and like dip my fingers in it and hold him and like shove it into his nose? Like, and if he's like snorting the anti mind control food, will that unmind control him? And then you just have that DM who's like, do a dexterity check like and then and then when when that sort of nonsense happens you guys are like no catabble plus is in dungeons and dragons man king of limbs 449 says wikipedia says it's legendary animal from ethiopia oh well i'm a huge fan of ethiopian cuisine i'll be honest if you haven't tuned into this channel i will always encourage you to go to an ethiopian restaurant and get yodoro tibs shiro and kitfo with a side of meat mita. Mm, and those collard greens. Oh, Catabla Gloss. This is a five out of five limited card. This is a spectacular limited card. You can set the toughness of a god to zero, killing it, getting around the indestructibility. Um, yeah, I, I go to an Ethiopian restaurant and I order roast Catabla Gloss. Uh, raw, please, with clarified butter. All right. Here we go. Cling to dust. 
Cling to dust. One black. Exile target card from a graveyard. If it was a creature card, you gain three life. Otherwise, you draw a card. This is a not great card in limited. Zero or one out of five in limited. But Cling to Dust is a very potent, um, very, very potent constructed card. Because a lot of times constructed decks are built around like a particular card sticking and just being there for freaking ever. Um, you know, for instance, the uh, Cauldron Familiar, the cat. Like you just start getting the cat going in and out of graveyards forever and you're just, oh, it's too much. And you just pull it out. Um, this is very much so a sideboard card, but it's the kind of sideboard card that gets me very, very excited. Very, very excited. Discordant Piper. I love the word discordant so much. It's a one, two. Excuse me, it's a two, one for one and a black. When Discordant Piper dies, create an O one one white goat creature token. Hi. Yeah, is it is it that time again? Is it afternoon snuggle time? Come here. Come on. Come here. No! <laughs> Sheriff! 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 Come here! Fuck! <laughs> Damn it! Um this art is hilarious. The total 420 blaze at Discord and Piper. Um, this is an acceptable limited card. Three out of five. It's a two one for two common stat line. It has a little goat that pops out. We might even we might even say it's like a four out of five because it like blocks twice for a really slow thing. For constructed, if you ever play this, um, I hope you're running a goat tribal deck. Drag to the underworld. Oh my god. This is what it felt like when your mom wanted you to go with her to run errands on a Saturday. But mom, I have a Game Boy. Please, mom. Two and two black. Instant. The spell costs X less to cast, where X is your devotion to black. Destroy target creature. Huh. Yeah. Limited five out of five. Limited five out of five. Limited five out of five. Limited five out of limited five out of limited five out of five. Um, what do I think about this in constructed? In constructed, I might actually give this a three out of five. Getting two black devotion is not very difficult. Um, you know, you just play a couple black creatures. There's a lot of good one drops from the. Um, Knight of the Ebon Legion to the Grim 2-1 that comes and tap the guy that's like, I don't remember what his name is. Um, and I think many of you will gutter bones. That's right. Gutter bones. Gutter bones. Oh, Fenlurk. Oh, Fenlurk is a fun one. Um, it, like many of you will fondly remember the spell cast down, destroy target non-legendary creature. Oh. Yeah. Drag to the Underworld often is a cast down with upside. You can actually just destroy a creature, legendary or not. Um, so I think that like in mono black, this could see like two of or something like that. So I would give this three out of five in constructed, maybe a two out of five. Eat to extinction, exile target creature or planeswalker. Look at the top card of your library. You may put that card into your graveyard. So it's kind of like a surveil. Oh, this card is actually fucking insane. Five out of five constructed. Holy shit. Five out of five constructed. Are you kidding me? Oh my god. Jesus. This is like better than Vraska's Contempt, man. I mean, the life game is pretty relevant. Exile target creature or planeswalker is stunning. I mean, this is five out of five in limited, five out of five constructed. Why is that not surveil one? Because surveil one, you reveal the card, leave it there or put it in the graveyard. This is look, so you don't show it to your opponent. And you can leave it there or you can put it face up in the graveyard. So, I mean, the short answer is it's different than... Uh, Surveil. It's different. 
Does surveil reveal? I thought it didn't. Surveil doesn't reveal? What am I confusing it with? Explore, that's what I'm confusing it with. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm totally conflating it with uh, explore. So, uh, it turns out surveil doesn't reveal. So yeah, this is surveil. All right. Um, the, the big difference between this and surveil is then therefore, it's not a keyword. So for instance, if you had something like disinformation campaign that said whenever you surveil, return this to the hand, E2 extinction does not proc that. This card, if you don't understand why this card is fucking insane, this card is insane. This is an insane card. It's one black and three to exile a creature or a plane walker at instant speed. Oh, and then you get to do some fixing on the top. Fuck. Oh, my God, this card is incredible. And look at this art. Oh, my God, yes. This is what it feels like to be food being eaten by me. There I am, late at night. Ah, oh, yes. Having hummus with chips right before bedtime is a good weight loss technique. Oh my god. And it's easier to splash than Vraska's? God, that's so good. Elspeth's Nightmare, Tuna Black. Ooh, that art is saucy. Destroy target creature and opponent controls with power two or less. Nice. Target opponent reveals their hand. You choose a non-creature, non-land card from it. That player discards that card. Nice. Exile target opponent's graveyard. Nice. This is a five out of five limited card because it's a three mana delete a thing. Occasionally delete a second thing from their hand that really matters. And blow up the graveyard, which is used for escape now. This is amazing and limited. For constructed, I would give this a three out of five. Because um, there's many decks that have a lot of creatures and not a lot of non-creature cards. Or there are a lot of control decks that don't have a lot of creatures, but do have a lot of non-creature cards in their hand. So often in Constructed, Chapter 1 will be good and Chapter 2 will be bad, or Chapter 1 will be bad and Chapter 2 will be good. And then the Exile Target Opponent's Graveyard um, is pretty easy to get around. As someone that actually ran Phyrexian Scriptures, Exile target opponent's graveyard. It can feel kind of easy to summon it back out. So I'd give it like a three, two, two and constructed probably two. Enemy of enlightenment, an enchantment creature demon, a five, five flyer for six. <gasps> Ooh. Enemy of enlightenment gets minus one, minus one for each card in your opponent's hands. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Oh my God. Okay, so, shit, man. I'd give this limited five out of five. Holy shit, I, I adore this card. Oh my god. A five, five flyer in limited. Oh my god, this is insane. At the beginning of your upkeep, each player discards a card. Yep. Untap, upkeep, draw. So you can draw your card and play it, and your opponent has to play theirs. If it was their upkeep, it would be broken. I don't think so. It was untap, upkeep, draw. I, I mean, th this is a 4-4 four, four flyer for 6 that's making discard happen a lot. Because, I mean, think about this. Your opponent kept the card in hand, so you now have a 4-4 four, four flyer. Then it's your upkeep. You make that player discard the card, buffing the enemy of enlightenment. So, oh, oh, yeah. Um, six mana, it's okay to have some six mana cards in your deck, in limited. 
Like, if you have three pricey cards, something like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jesus. Yeah, look, sorry, anyways. So you, if you have some expensive cards, fantastic, perfect. The fact that it's a flyer, a big flyer that can deal damage, if your opponent does draw cards, they are forced to cast those cards very, very quickly. Otherwise, they're going to get discarded and lose all the card draw value, at which point we now have a 5-5 demon again. Um, I mean, it, it's going to be with remarkable consistency, a 5-5 flyer. Mm, I fucking love this enemy of enlightenment. Five out of five and limited. Constructed zero. <laughs> a whole bad card. Yeah, no, I maybe, 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 maybe there is a some plausible way to play a discard deck that no, no, no. It's a six mana card. It's very hard to cast and constructed. It's too fast. Erebos bleak hearted. Oh my god, that art is so good. Oh, I'm shook. Jesus. Three and a black. Legendary I enchantment mean, creature, god, indestructible, five, six. As long as your devotion to black is less than five, Erebos isn't a creature. Whenever another creature you control dies, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. Ooh. Second other creature, target creature gets minus two, minus one till end of turn. Ooh. This is gonna be very good in aggro black decks in constructed. I mean in limited, I mean I would give it. A five. I think all the gods are just fucking five out of five bombs. Um, you can turn creatures and life into cards. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. Hello, Sheriff. Welcome back. Here, let me give you some scritches. Are you in the mood for scritches? Generally speaking, Sheriff is in the mood for scratches. Give me give me a quick second. We're we're having a really nice moment here. Yeah, the god's like really good. Yeah, this is this is my hand. It should smell a little bit like spinach and chicken. These are some of Sheriff's big interest on our profile page. Alright. Um this this reminds me of an alternative kind of Midnight Reaper. How do we feel about this pairing with cat decks? I'm telling you, man, I'm running that double white card where I'm going to just exile X enchantments and artifacts. <whistles> Grab a lot says, if the god cards aren't a creature, can they not be targeted by removal? That's correct. Because if your devotion is less than five, it's not a creature. So it's just a legendary enchantment. Erebos's Intervention, X and Black. Choose one. Dark creature gets minus X, minus X until end of turn. You gain X life. Ooh! Exile up to twice X cards from graveyards. Ooh! Huh. Okay. In limited, five out of five. Uh, just... Just the first one. Target creature gets minus X, minus X, and you gain X life is just incredibly good. Removal is always unbelievably good. Um, exile up to twice X cards from graveyards. You know, another sort of conditional thing. Um, good hate for certain types of decks. So when it comes to... God, I just want to see this art one more time. I mean, that is just spellbinding. Fuck. There's a lot of good limited cards here, man. Yep. Um, for Constructed, there's certain decks where this is going to be good to run. If there's cats in the graveyard, you can exile up to twice X cats. Um, it does target them, so there's the opportunity for things to respond. 
So you have to get them to try to remove the cat from the graveyard, and then you can hit it. But e either way. Um, Let me, let me see something real fast. Wait. Cauldron Familiar. Cauldron Familiar says... Sacrifice a food, return Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield. So you sack a food, and then return target Cauldron Familiar from your graveyard to the battlefield. So then in response, you exile it from the graveyard. So yeah, so that's, that's, that's how I thought it worked, and it is in fact how it does work. But what you can't do is just target a cat because then if that happens, then they can sack and bring it back. And if they have more foods, then they can in response sack another food and bring the cat back. But either way, this appears to have some merit against some constructed decks with the exile up to twice X target cards from graveyards. That's nice. The target creature gets minus X minus X until end of turn you gain X life. This is weaker than you might think in Constructed. I'd give it like a 2 or 3 out of 5. I'd probably give it a, a, a solid 2 out of 5 in Constructed. The thing is, if I am paying 3, and I'm giving something minus 3, minus 3, shit, I could be running that other card that's Exile. That's so good. So this, to me, really seems like maybe a sideboard card black decks might use to fight cat decks. So that's why I give it a 2 out of 5. Final Death. Exile target creature. Amazing and limited. I mean, we're going to have a lot of amazing black cards and limited because there's a lot of removal in blacks and exile creature is like really good. You don't need to have this card in constructed because you already have the four mana exile creature with more upside. So, um, you know, it's five out of five limited, zero out of five constructed. Maybe one out of five constructed. Maybe one out of five constructed. Fruit of Tizarus. <laughs> <laughs> this art actually cracks me up so much, man. Oh my god. It's like someone was in the middle of a modeling shoot and then a sniper took him out. Target player loses two life. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. Eh. I mean, it seems like zero out of five, one out of five, limited. You don't want to run this. It doesn't affect the board at all. Maybe there's some weird way to cast this three times. Eh. I'm going to say one out of five for Constructed because I can... Like, Sovereign Bite did show up in some decks uh, in metas of the past, but Sovereign Bite, three damage is quite quite a bit different from two. I don't know. Maybe may, maybe maybe it can be in one, but I'm still, I'm still going to give it a one. It's, it's, it's a teensy tiny power level of card. Funeral rites, two and a black, you draw two cards, you lose two life, and put the top two cards of your graveyard into your library. This is a very reasonable card that you'd have in limited. It's a black draw card spell, so, you know, put in four, four out of five. Um, for constructed, ooh, I don't really know how to evaluate this. I'd probably say one, probably one seems super fringy like if you are mono black control and you are really trying hard to not run creatures maybe you run the funeral rites but like if you're mono black i mean run midnight reapers run your god and then your creature's death will trigger you to get things back um yeah, Dragonius 88 says mono black escape. Yep, there is a mono black deck that is control that has a lot of escape or some ways to cast things from the graveyard. Um, yeah, I don't know. Th th this doesn't seem very reasonable in Constructed Limited, though. Just having a card that draws you two is, is nice. Grave Breaker Lamia. Four and a black. An enchantment creature, Snake Lamia. Wait, Lamia is not a proper noun? Lamia, Lamia is a type of thing? Or is it Lamia? I'm going to say Lamia because it makes me laugh more. Lifelink. When Grave Breaker Lamia enters the battlefield, search your library for a card, then put it into your graveyard, then shuffle your library. Spells you cast from your graveyard cost one less to cast. Um, Solid 3 out of 5 limited. A 4-4 four, four for 5. You've heard me talk several times that 
four toughness is a real inflection point. Things with three toughness, um, there's a lot of things to deal three damage, a lot of red removal, so on and so forth. Um, so being able to hit four, four power, can break through a lot of things. Lifelink, very nice. It's very good for stabilizing. And then uh, deliberately putting things in the graveyard so I can cast them cheaply. I don't really know how to evaluate that last line, so I'd probably say 3 out of 5 limited. Constructed, 0 out of 5. I can't even think of a situation in which you'd get to turn 5 and fist pump for playing a 4-4 four, four on the ground. Um, yeah, 0 out of 5 constructed. Not a lot of these cards are going to see constructed play. Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Three and a double black. When Gray Merchant of Asphodel enters a battlefield, each opponent loses X life. Where X is your devotion to black, you gain life equal to the life lost this way. Why is everyone saying Gary? Why is everyone saying Gary to me? Is this... Is this Gary? I've never... You guys were so quiet. Everyone was going, mm-hmm, yeah, sure, seems fine. Mm-hmm, yeah, okay. And everyone's just like, Gary, oh my god, 6.5 out of 5. We love Gary. Gary, raise the roof, etc. Raise your dongers and other dead memes. What's Gary? Oh, Gray Merchant of Asphodel. Gary. Gray. Gary. Gray. Ah. Uh, get. Ah. Uh. <sighs> what do I think about this as a constructed card? A 5-mana 2-4 that pings for a bit? Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. 0 out of 5 constructed. Limited, though. This is a 3 out of 5. This... This took over constructed last time. The card was meta defining. In this meta, ah, uh, day nine cracks his knuckles. Day nine, ah, uh, loosens up his bones. Day nine says, "This card, in constructed." In this meta, zero out of five constructed. Zero out of five. And you know what? Siege Rhino, not going to be useful in today's day and age. Zero out of five. Clip it and ship it. Welcome to Day Nine's Constructed Evaluation, where we think that the Gray Merchant of Asphodel is zero out of five. Ah, 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 ah. Zero out of five. Where's my coffee? Not your finest prediction? This is my finest prediction. You know what's going to happen? There's a lot of people who are like, this card was broken once upon a past and therefore will always be broken because all metas are the same. Zero out of five. And the, my favorite thing is every time someone tries to reference the history of how this card was so broken in the original Theros block, every time you do that, I become more powerful. Every time. Every time you do it. If in the future, it's in a good deck, and you're like, Sean, look at this clip. Every time you do that, it makes me more powerful. I want you to know that, okay? Now, as for the limited considerations of this pupper, I'm still going to say 3 out of 5. Um, weirdly... The ability to drain 5 plus life from your opponent late game in limited is actually kind of relevant. Um, obviously, a 2-4 for 5 is a bad stat line. This provides 2 devotion in and of itself. Boards get clogged a lot. It's an uncommon. You can just plop down the Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Or as I will call him... Gary, the merchant of Dad Asphodel. So, I'm going to give him a 3 out of 5. Ah, and those were my predictions. 0 out of 5 in Constructed, 3 out of 5 in Limited. God, it feels, it feels good to be able to 
have that precognition, you know? Like, I I am one of the precogs in the gel in Minority Report, and I'm like, oh, oh, zero out of five, and the little fucking wooden ball rolls down, and everyone's like, oh, oh my god, we, we have to sell all of these cards off right away. Like, this, it feels good to know that I'm helping the world in this way. Pre-rating is never wrong, okay? Grim Physician. One black. When Grim Physician dies, target creature and opponent controls gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. Like a three out of five in um, Limited, this looks kind of like removal. It's removally ish but cards like this can sometimes be a pain in the ass to get to die. How do I get this bastard to die so I can actually minus one, minus one something? Um... It has some merit, but it's just, it's not incredible. So I, I'd give it like 3 out of 5, 2 out of 5, something like this. Constructed, 0 out of 5. 0 out of 5. It gives devotion to Gary. Gary is going to come down, he's going to zap you because he's Gary. Don't even care, little bit. 0 out of 5 for Gary. God, that's I'm I'm all in. That's the hill we're gonna drop that on. Hateful Eidolon, a single black and enchantment creature. Whenever an enchanted creature dies, draw a card for each or you control that was attached to it. Huh. That is an interesting one for That's an interesting one for the sake of limited makes you want to get you know like black white play some auras the creature dies it fills back up again anything that gives me more card draw even under conditions in um limited does does perk my interest perk my interest peak my interest perk just it perks my interest ah <laughs> uh. Afghanistan says, I just joined. Why is every card getting 0 out of 5 to 3 out of 5? Dude, you have not been watching this. I think the, the least used rating today has been 4. We've been doing a lot of, a lot of zeros. Good chunk of 5s. So I, I'd give this a 0 out of 5 in Constructed because we typically do that for Constructed. I'm interested in this limited. This might be like a 1-2. Or not. It is a 1-2. This might be a 3 out of 5. For limited, because I can just see the value. I mean, it's just a one-two lifelinker most of the time, which is not not really that great. So, eh. inevitable end. Two and a black enchant creature. Enchanted creature has at the beginning of your upkeep sacrifice a creature. That's cute. It's very cute. It's very cute. This is very cute. Because what happens is, let's say that the opponent has. Small creature, small creature, big creature. You put the inevitable end on the big creature. Pass the turn to them, and they go, Oh, I guess I'll sacrifice a small creature to keep my big creature up. Uh, and so if your opponent continues to try to keep the big creature up, they wind up losing the whole board. A lot of times they'll just sack the big creature. So this is effectively a two-mana... <sighs> A three mana kill a creature, and occasionally it's a three mana two for one or three for one or more. Um, I don't think this will see any constructed play at all, like a zero, because the black. I mean, a lot of the reason why I would give this a zero uh, in constructed is that there's access to just so many good removal cards. Like now, especially that there's that black exile card that why would you run this instead of that Black Exile card? This is 0 out of 5 in Constructed. In Limited, though, 5 out of 5. Very good in Limited. It's just a kill a creature, which is... Depending upon the meta, it might be sideboardy. I, I, I would really struggle to envision a world in which that would even be... Even if, if, if your opponent said, we are only going to be mid-rangey. So there's a lot of mid-range things. You have exile effects and board sweepers. You'd run one of those two, you know what I mean? Uh, Dragoni says, you can play this against something indestructible, which, though true and helpful, more so in limited. In constructed, again, we have lots of exile effects. We have lots of exile effects. Boop. 
Lampad of Death's Vigil. One and a black. Sacrifice creature, each opponent loses one life, you gain one life. One, three. You know, black consistently has a sort of... Just a little baby one, three for two. That, like, can do some little ping thing, like, gain a little life. So this is just your, a very neutral two out of five limited. Never going to see play in Constructed. It's very nice that it's an enchantment creature nymph. So, um, you know can valuably be held in hand to proc constellations in limited. Alright. Minions return. Two and a black. Flash. Enchanted creature. When enchanted creature dies, return that card to the battlefield under your control. Oh! This is a lot of fun. This card is... I, I mean, I kind of like it. I kind of like it, right? It's just it's just a way to say, if I have a five-mana creature, especially a five-mana creature with, like, an enter the battlefield effect, I can play Minion's Return, and I'm effectively just spending three mana to recast a five-mana card. It's Flash, which is exceptional. So I, I would put this as four out of five in Limited. I say four out of five because um, you can really shoot yourself in the foot if you don't have enough targets for this. Um, I, I feel like this is a little different from something like Soul Salvage, which takes things from the graveyard and put it back in the hand, and then you recast it. Minion's Return means that, like, if you draw this and you don't have creatures on the board, you can get screwed. So maybe, maybe actually only even three or four out of five. Uh, but I mean, it's a very good way to let a creature die, and then it comes back. Hey, Gleek Don guy, thanks for those five gifties, man. We're coming here, unveiling truth. Did you know that Gary? is going to continue to sit in an office doing nothing because he's a shit card. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah. Okay, sorry. I, I have to say hello to all my girls. Meyer Triton, one in a black. A death touch, two, one. When Meyer Triton enters the battlefield, put the top two cards, your library, into your graveyard, and you gain two life. This is a, this is a solid... This is a solid... Uh, Gary's Day 9's Oko moment for this set. Was Oko undervalued? Because I remember what happened when I was evaluating pretty much all the dual colored cards is that I was running over my show by an hour and I was so hungry. I just went, uh, uh, 2 out of 5, 1 out of 5, 8 out of 5, 3 out of 5. I was just fucking going as fast as I could. So I don't even remember um, what any of those evaluations were. But I, I think Meyer Triton is... Uh, just a really nice limited card. A really nice limited card. Um, it's a it's a two one with death touch. A great blocker. He heals. Um, yeah, I, I I I don't I don't know if we can appropriately reference any of the last twenty minutes of that <laughs> of review set. If you want to really dig in on my my. Poor evaluations. Come on, there, there, there's the easiest, most obvious one ever, which is Once Upon a Time, that I spent a long time being like, yeah, I don't know about this card. I don't know. I don't know about this one. Huh? That's the one. I mean, if you're gonna if you're gonna try to if you're gonna try to make a joke, man, you got you got to build it upon the correct foundation. The Meyer Triton is the kind of card that you're always happy to have in limited. It's two mana, two on Death Touch, blocks, heals. You know. Zero out of five and constructed because everything's zero out of five. I mean, it's just it, it doesn't do terribly much. There's enough more, um, enough that are good. Did I give the Gilded Goose one? I thought I gave the Gilded Goose a high rating. I thought my analysis of Gilded Goose was no matter how much I doubt the card upon initial investigation, one mana rampers always wind up being broken somehow. I believe those were relatively close to my exact words. I remember I looked at it and was like, eh. I remember saying I wasn't too keen on it, but I feel like they always wind up being broken. Ow. Ow. Whatever. 
I feel like my own memories of myself. I feel like pseudo reliable. I think you thought food was going to fail. In a lot of circumstances, I thought food was not going to be very useful. And I think I appropriately called that. Um, and I remember getting real excited about Wicked Wolf. I do remember that. I had some. I was pretty. I was pretty pleased about that. I was pretty pleased about the truth. Blacklands Paragon was pretty accurate. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite as accurate. <laughs> Myers Grass, one in the black, Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature gets minus three, minus three. Five out of five in limited, amazing in limited. Kills a lot of things. And remember, three is a big inflection point, three to four. Um, uh, constructed, no. No, we don't need this. We already have other ways to just kill things, exile things, stuff like this. Magus' favor, one black, Enchant Creature. Enchant Creature gets plus two, minus one. Huh. 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 Okay, here's here's what's weird about it. Here's what's weird about this card is that technically this is a recurring baby removal. Um, but it can also be used to get some extra trampling in like this would be nice and green you know to smash on in but like minus one is just it, minus one is just not that powerful good of a thing you know when things are like minus one minus one humans typically don't go oh that's removal when it's like minus two minus two people are like this is a removal card so with magus's favor i kind of feel a little bit like This is like two out of five limited, maybe one out of five limited. I don't even see it being having any merit in constructed because I don't know using black to just pump some small stuff. Maybe if you have like a dread horde butcher and you make it big. I mean, the the way I can see this having some merit is like a twenty third card is if I have a flyer and I'm trying to end the game fast. Nightmare Shepherd, two and a pair of black, flying. Whatever another non-token creature you control dies, you may exile it. If you do create a token that's a copy of that creature, except it's 1-1 one, one and it's a nightmare in addition to its other types. Fuck. This card is spectacular. Five out of five and limited. Oh my god, it's a 4-4 four, four flyer for four. Wow. In a mono black aggro and constructed, or even some black splash red, you can have a bunch of small creatures like Knight of the Ebon Legion, hell, even like a Fen Lurker, Gutter Bones. And, and they can just be dying and keep coming back. Now, if they're tokens, they don't actually wind up generating any devotion. So I think that this is like two out of five. <laughs> yeah, Nisha, the artist Dan I lecturing us on the finer things in life. See, yeah, that's me. That's me in my little purple garb, my little bendy horns, and my really nice cane. And that's all of you. Just like, please, Day Nine, please tell us how the cards are going to work. And that's what I'm doing for you, man. I'm telling you, I know exactly how this shit goes down. Uh Ugh. Damn. Even like, yeah, white weenie. Things that when they die, they summon tokens, like a like hunted witness. It's kind of interesting. Nyx Born Marauder. Two, and two black. It's a vanilla creature, zero out of five constructed. Boom, we did it. This is a very acceptable card, I think, in limited. Oh, that's fine, like three out of five. It's fine. Um, it's sort of a fine. Man, I, I, I just hate things that are 4-3s. 4-3 is my least favorite stat line in the history of Magic because it means that you're slow to come out in a lot of circumstances and you trade with like some 2-drops and a lot of 3-drops. It always kind of feels weird. 
uh, you know, uh, it's an enchantment creature, so you know, prong constellation with four, three, I don't know, it's just like a three out of five blue and a zero five constructed. Omen of the Dead. One black. Flash. When Omen of the Dead enters battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Huh. Wow. Wow. And Sack to Scry. I think that this is actually like a 5 out of 5. No, 4 out of 5 in uh, Limited. 4 out of 5 because it is slow. You do spend a thing to bounce something back to the hand, but it's pretty cheap. Adds to Devotion. It is an enchantment of Prox Constellation. There, th there are enough cards like this that you can just have it be a dead card when you draw it in some circumstances, but... Um, or, or an undervalued thing, but I mean like one black to get a creature card back. What do we think about this in Constructed? I don't see it being spectacular in Constructed. I don't see it being spectacular and, dis and constructed. And here's the reason. If you run four copies of a card, you get it a lot of the time. If you want it more than four times, having something that looks in your deck to get it um, is typically what you would do. You know, like a search your library for an enchantment, put it into your hand. So I run four fires of invention and two of those. Uh, you typically would not run a like return an enchantment back from your graveyard to there, right? Because your base, because one is reactive, my thing dies. Oh fuck! Well, now I can get value out of Omen of the Dead versus proactive. I want this enchantment, so I'm going to cast a spell to get it. Um, so I think for that reason, um, I'm going to say it's probably not going to show up in constructed. I'm going to give it a one out of five because maybe, 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 maybe. There's a deck out there that can make consistent use of this. Maybe. But I doubt it. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say one. I'm gonna say one in constructed. But I think this is four out of five in limited due to the fact that you're getting to recur your best creature. You can cast this in an emergency. It gives devotion to Prox Constellation. You know, it seems like very nice. Farika's Libation, two and a black. Choose one. Target opponent sacrifices a creature. Target opponent sacrifices enchantment. Hmm. Obviously, I'm going to say it's like four out of five in limited. Not five out of five because when its opponent chooses what they're sacrificing, you know, four out of five. The weird thing is that in in um, constructed, this is black enchantment removal at instant speed. Angrath's Rampage is sorcery speed, requires red. Um, I can see real merit for this. This seems very sideboardy, like two out of five. Very, very sideboardy. And I really think it's for that second one. Target opponent sacrifices an enchantment. That's really good. This is sort of like a new thing, Black's enchantment removal. And they can only delete the opponent's uh, enchantment. So so that's that's kind of interesting to me. So I, I actually, I'm kind of oh, interested in this. Two out of five, constructed. Farika Spawn, three and a black. Escape for five and a black. Exile three other cards from your graveyard. Farika Spawn escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it. When it enters the battlefield this way, each opponent sacrifices a non-Gorgon creature. Whoa. Fuck. Five out of five. Five out of five and limited. Because you play it. It's a 3-4 for four, 4, which is okay. But then you can cast it. It escapes. It's now a 5-6 that forces the opponent to sacrifice. And when it dies, it goes back to the graveyard. And then I can escape it again. Fuck, that is incredible. Wow. Inconstructed, though. Fuck, I don't know. Exiling three other cards from your graveyard for six seems tough. 
it, it would only be in mono black mid range. You wouldn't have it in aggro because you just wouldn't have enough mana. I again, I'm gonna put this one out of five constructed. My intuition tells me. Um, my intuition tells me that this is just. It's hard for me to imagine. It's, it's just hard for me to imagine a deck where this lives. Because, like, oh, my opponent sacrifices a creature. Well, I am having to escape for six and exiling three to make my opponent sacrifice a creature, which is not going to be targeted, which is not instant speed, which is late in the game. Yeah, I mean, it's unbelievable and limited. Unbelievable and limited. But I, I don't really see it constructed. But maybe there's some fringe in there. Being able to recur something that's constantly forcing sacrifices has some real cool merit to it. Rage Scarge Kapalthapop. What was the name of the thing? Thapalthapop? Kapalthapop? Blight Bird? Katalblapos. <laughs> Katalblapos, yeah. Four and a black. Minotaur Berserker. Five, four. When Rage Scarge Berserker enters the battlefield, target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and gains indestructible until end of turn. This creature is very thickly statted. A 5-4 five, for 5 that's also giving another creature the ability to swing. Very, very good limited card. No way this is a constructed playable card at all. Just 5 mana for what is more or less a vanilla 5-4. <sighs> Scavenging Harpy. 3 mana flyer. When Scavenging Carpet enters the battlefield, exile target card from an opponent's graveyard. This is just a solid 3 out of 5 limited. 0 out of 5 constructed. The reason it's good limited, it's a 2-1 flyer, which can often just end the game on its own. There are some escape value cards, and this just deletes it. Um, there's better ways to exile stuff from graveyards, such as the instant speed um, delete twice X targets from graveyard. Soul Reaper of Magus. Two and a black. Sack a creature, draw a card. Yeah. Um, obviously, super, superlatively uh, limited. Most most commons wind up being, like, limited. I mean, just, it's it's agonizingly slow. And this guy's head is so big. This is so funny, man. Minotaur Shaman. Not gonna want him. Temple Thief. One and a black. It's a human rogue. Temple Thief can't be blocked by enchanted creatures or enchantment creatures. Ooh, I this is going to get the coveted 3.5 out of 5 from me. Um, bears, two twos for two mana. You're always comfortable to have one. This has a little bit of an upside. So the coveted 3.5 out of 10. I don't believe in doing partial numbers. I'm a discrete mathematician. So, you know, I got to break my rules where I can. Treacherous Blessing, two and a black, enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, draw three cards. Yeah! Whenever you cast a spell, lose one life. When Treacherous Blessing becomes the target of a spell or ability, sacrifice it. Oh. Oh! Okay, constructed wise, I can actually see a three or th four mana. What the fuck? Three or four out of five aggro deck that uses this treacherous blessing. If you are like Rakdos aggro, I mean, you just you just start playing this shit. And refilling on one mana cards. I mean, Jesus. Three cards for three mana is kind of cool. And then you switch a Ruit. <laughs> Fits in stacks. Yes, stacks is an interesting one. Where you can just cut the blue, run Treacherous Blessings and Doom Foretold, and just like bounce, sack it. You can play the Doom Foretold, take a point of damage, pass to them, they sack something, comes back to you, you sack the Treacherous Blessing.
Yeah, th there's some real merit to this. Like, drawing three cards for three mana is so good. Especially for just one black. Wow. I mean, that's incredible. Um, wow. For limited, I I think... Oh, shit. I think it's actually okay. I, I'm bad at understanding life costs in limited. Um, casting a spell and losing a life is... Frightening. I don't know. I mean, the, the, I, I would give this like a four out of five and limited and constructed. I, I just, there's so many ideas that come to mind with this. It's so, so, so hard. I think it's one of these cards that's going to be like super easy to just like accidentally kill yourself with. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, drawing three cards for three feels good. Timoret calls the dead. Uh, hello, is the dead there? Two and a black. Put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. Then you may exile a creature or enchantment card from your graveyard. If you do, create some zomboids. I genuinely wonder if there are cards that say when you exile this, do the following effect. And then number three is you gain X life and scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. I do not like this card. This card gets the Sean rejection. I don't even want to rate this card. I mean, even this guy that's just like, hello, he's just posing there, he's looking at me. I don't know, man. This card is about as uninspiring as Gary. Like, if you whiff on the enchantment, let's assume you don't whiff on the creature or enchantment into your graveyard. You make a pair of two twos, then you scry two and gain two. I think it's going to be fine and limited. It's a fine. You just, you know, you make you make some two twos, you make a pair of two twos. So it's like two out of five and limited. Maybe I have to say three out of five because there's some value. And then in Constructed, I mean, honestly, like, come on, man. Unless you're a mill deck and you're trying desperately to just self-mill with as few cards as possible. I mean, even if you get more zombies out, you're just going to gain, like, three life instead of two and scratch three cards instead of two. So it's just like, that's a, that's a big boo out of your pal, Sean. Timrat Chosen from Death. All right. This is exactly how I felt when I went back to streaming. I was like, are you getting nine? Two black. Legendary enchantment creature demigod. Timrat's toughness is equal to your devotion to black. Another of you. Okay. Pay one and a black. Exile to two target cards from graveyards. You gain one life for each creature card exiled this way. I mean, I don't even care about this card. I mean, this is this is a pair of one out of fives for me. I mean, I guess it's a two out of five or three out of five limited because it's going to be like a two-two or something. It doesn't seem good. It doesn't feel good. I don't think it is good. I guess it's three out of five and limited because it's an enchantment, so it can proc constellation. It's a two-two for two, so... Pfft. But what if we're playing Constructed because we like ladder points? Then what are we going to do? We're going to play this, and it's going to be a 2-2, two -two and I'm going to go, please, please put creature cards in your graveyard so I can waste my turn not casting a creature and instead spending two mana to exile two cards so I can gain a life, maybe. Bah. One out of five Constructed, three out of five Limited. Underworld Charger, nay. Two and a black. Underworld Charger can't block. Nice. It escapes with two plus one plus one counters on it. Nicer. Not a potent card and constructed because we have alternative upside things like Midnight Reaper that's still bonking for three. Um, but in our good friendly mode of limited, a three three for three is fine, even if it can't block. You want it to block, but even if it can't. You keep swinging with it, it dies for five, you then get a five five on it. Some nice ability to draw, so I'd give this a 3 out of 5 in limited for that reason. Hey, Dust Wizard, good to see you, man. Underworld Dreams. Whenever an opponent draws a card, Underworld Dreams deals 1 damage to that player. Hmm... <laughs> 
Yeah. Yeah. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh, ah. Uh. Mm. Okay, in limited, this card is not as good because triple black is a big, 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 big pain in the ass. I would say for limited, I would give this two out of four, two out of five, one out of five. The reason being, if you finally do get to the point where you play this, you throw that down and assuming all things being straightforward in your match, your opponent's going to be taking one damage a turn, one damage a turn, one damage a turn, one damage a turn. You spent a whole card affecting the board none which is very important in limited. So Underworld Dreams, I don't value very highly in limited, but in constructed, mm, 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 mm. ow, ah, uh, <sighs> I was trying to rotate in a way that would be funny, but I'm not strong enough, ow. <sighs> my little muscles, my little ribs. I have some, 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 real, some real muscle upsettiness being here. You know what? You know what? I'm going to have some Tums. I'm going to have some Tums. If I'm up against a control deck and I'm mono black, I'm going to be running some of these. Putting this in here. It's going to feel so good. They're going to be drawing cards to try to find answers. They're going to be taking damage. It's going to be really good. How much devotion do I get from this? That's right. Don't kill me in Inglorious Bastards, because we're getting three devotion. This is four or five out of five. This is so good. Trust out says your emotional support ravens have some friends and enchantments now. <laughs> That's right! Oh my god, Revenge of the Raven plus Underworld Dreams. Damn, 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 damn. Okay, four, four or five out of five in Constructed. Love it. Venom, Venomous Hierophant. Three and a black. When Venomous Hierophant enters the battlefield, put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard. It's a four mana, three, three with death touch. Totally fine pack filler. I think I was giving these three out of five at the start, but I'm increasingly feeling uninspired. I also need a break because I've been talking continuously for four hours. I have been talking for four hours with no break. It's not even like I'm taking a turn and I stop talking to think about the turn and then I take it. I've been talking for four hours. I need a break. I need to use a restroom. I need to get more coffee. Jesus. So this thing, because we're tired, this is a two out of five in limited and a zero out of five in constructed. And I think that's an accurate rating. Whoa, Strider. Two and a black. Creature horror. When Whoa, Strider enters the battlefield, create an 0-1 white goat creature token. Sacrifice another creature. Scry one. This is an above average limited card. I'd give it the coveted four out of five. Because you, a, a three, two for three is a very typical stat line in limited. You see that all over the place. Um, getting another blocker in 01 is very nice. And having this thing be able to recur uh, as a five, four with another goat is really nice. Um, also, sacrifice another creature is a particularly nice thing um, because we don't have to we don't have to pay anything. We just sack and scry. So a lot of times you block with the goat, then before combat damage happens, you sack the goat, and you scry one. It's pretty good. Like four out of five in limited, constructed. I'd probably just give it a zero out of five again. You got to jump through too many hoops to make this puppy work. <gasps> it's time for red. Stay tuned. I, day nine, am going to take a substantial break. For how long? Eight minutes. I'm going to get coffee, I'm going to get water, I'm going to use a restroom, and I'm not going to say a damn thing because my throat is getting very tired. And then when we return, we're going to do red, we're going to do green. Oh, I fucking love green. And then we're going to do all the multicolored things. We're going to take our time on those. We'll be back. Mmm. 